Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous, invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. And Foot Clan, the holidays are just around the corner, and if you're looking for the perfect gift for your loved ones, we want to tell you about Skylight Frames. The last year and a half, we have learned a different way to connect. Uh, there's been a lot of the, you know, you had Zoom calls. You had different ways to keep people in the know with your life, sharing moments with your family and friends. It can be hard to stay in touch when you're far away from one another. And what Skylight is doing is giving you a perfect gift to make that connection better. It is a photo frame that you can update instantly by email from anywhere. It's fantastic. And uh, it's super easy. It it's is. It's nice. Uh, Mike, we were talking before the show. We both have ours set up. Yep, got mine up and running. was incredibly easy, and adding pictures to it is equally as easy. Yeah, it takes 60 seconds. You plug it in. You use the touch screen. You connect it to your wireless network, and then they give you basically an email address, and you send photos to the email address from your phone. And they show up on the frame. It's a gorgeous 10-inch touch screen. And um, you got to check it out. And it's 100% satisfaction guaranteed. So as a special offer, you can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS. That's right. To get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's football, Thanksgiving, everything time. I don't know. <laughs> welcome into the Megalobowl. I... People weren't going to get it tomorrow, Mike, so I wanted you to do something. Ah, I see. Because it's technically football time tomorrow. It's football week. It's yeah. turkey week. <laughs> it's turkey time. Welcome into the Megalodon episode, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Should I give them the rundown? Should I let them know what we're doing on oh, today's show? Oh, man. How much breath do you have in you? Well, I'm not doing it without breathing. Well, but can you do it in one? <laughs> Buy or sell news and notes, never not working. Thanksgiving Day awards and the forecast for Thanksgiving Day. Starts of the week, boom, boom, kicker. The fantasy forecast with all the matchups. The fantasy face-off with the wheel of shame. And maybe, just maybe, if we're feeling generous, some mailbag. Was that, that oh, was my well goodness done. gracious. Damn. I feel like you could have gone way longer. I could have. I, we need more content. I am. Are you guys hydrated back there? Al, Judge Giamatti, are you guys prepared for this episode? Darn right. I'm on my second cup of tea this morning. Oh, Oh, maniac. Nothing hydrates like hot tea. Oh, yeah. Lots of caffeine. That is, uh, you don't normally have two by this time of day. No, definitely not. Is that why your shirt's off? (laughs) Just just because you're a wild man back there? A lot of pee breaks for Brooks coming. (laughs) Yeah, totally okay. But happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, indeed. Very excited for the show. Very excited for... The Wheel of Shame. I will not be spinning it today. Oh, I won't either, Mike. That means... Hmm. I guess I, by process of elimination, I will spin the wheel, but I'll do it as a service to you guys well, since you. you're not going to. Thank you. I appreciate you guys doing it so much for me lately. Yeah. I just hope that Mike has been merciful to me in a way we have not been to him. We continually buy him objects that don't fit him and certainly not his head. That... That's that pig nose. Does. That pig nose didn't. Fit, <laughs> it wouldn't have fit my arm comfortably. That thing, like an hour after How we did were it not done, pop? last Friday, an hour after we were done, I look over at Mike and he has an indent line <laughs> on his cheek from the ten minutes of wearing that pig nose. We are going to give away a signed Debo Samuel jersey. No, you're- 
a man. And we'll do so by dropping a hashtag at at some point during the episode today. We want you to share that you have made it through the Megalodon episode. Share that hashtag with us, and we will give an item away. And don't forget, look, because, you know, whatever, the show ends up at two to two and a half hours. That's not enough fantasy footballers in your life. The Party Room will be live tonight on Spotify, Green Room, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. We will be there. We will be, we will be uh, live. doing Very it live, live and uh, just having a good time right before the Thanksgiving break. Absolutely. Maybe we'll even have some more news about these players that we're going to talk about on today's show. If you would like to become one of our favorite people on earth, the Foot Clan, you can head to jointhefoot.com. You'll get an extra episode weekly. You'll get premium tools and resources like the Stream Finder tool and the Snapshot tool and a bunch of uh, start-sit tool with more options and a bunch of cool perks. You can go to jointhefoot.com, and all of our resources are on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, perfection did not happen last week in buy or sell. Nope. And, um, well, they say if you have too much perfection, it just gets boring. So we did not. Uh, so we took a week off so we of took being a week perfect. Off. Yeah. We all went one for three. Uh, Justin Herbert ended up a top 10 quarterback, which I was the only one to buy that. You guys both sold T. Higgins uh, as a top 24 wide receiver. I bought that for some reason. And we all bought the David Montgomery top 15, and he finished at 25. <laughs> yeah. Loser. But the Week 12 Megalodon edition. Let's start here. Devonta Freeman. Is he a top 24 running back against the Cleveland Browns? He's hit that mark in four of the last five games. However, he is still Devonta Freeman. Yeah, that's my biggest gripe uh, about him is he is old, um, slow, and the best running back on the team. That is a really unfortunate situation. Cleveland is not a smash matchup, not a terrible matchup. So this is, I mean, this is really just a very even line. Um, I'm going to buy... The poor, the poor guy's 29. Well, for running backs, that's one year before death. Um, I am going to buy the line of top 24. Uh, I think he gets in the end zone. And it, from what we saw from Latavius Murray, I, I'm still of the the belief that he has not just completely won this job away from Latavius Murray. I think it's Latavius Murray still recovering from the ankle injury. But according to what we saw last week, it seems like he is still recovering, not recovered. So uh, I think Freeman gets a touchdown. I'll buy it. I think it's the passing work that'll get him there. Mike? This is an easy buy for me. I think that Devonta Freeman is set up to have a uh, – not a – spectacular week but a very solid running back two performance all right our second buy by sell is dallas goddard will he hit the 55 yard mark against the giants 55! now playing now, the hits on yeah, now the megalodon pandering uh you're welcome we didn't set the line this is brooks he needs to hear it uh yeah i'm gonna buy it i i'm, I'm a big fan of dallas goddard moving forward Okay. I actually am as well. If you look at almost all of the behind the scenes metrics, the routes run, the snaps, the target share, all all of those things are great. It has not come through for fantasy greatness as far as total yards and touchdowns. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on the more repeatable, more predictable stats and I I like Dallas Goddard quite a bit. So yeah, I'm in. Bye. Yeah, he's he hasn't struggled to hit that mark and he's the only guy left, so I will buy this. Mac Jones, two passing touchdowns against Tennessee. He's only done that in four of 11 games. Ooh. This line is tough. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee is a depleted offense uh, that I do not think will be able to go into Foxborough and give them a game. I'm going to sell it. I think one touchdown pass and a myriad of wonderful turns to the left and right to hand the ball off to Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. I hate when we are all the same, but the last time we were all the same, we were all 100% correct. Uh, I'm, I'm going to follow suit. So if you do well, Andy, I'm doing well. I'm selling because of exactly what you said. I, I think that the Patriots are going to handle uh, the Tennessee Titans, 
and if they do, it'll be on the ground. I love all of those arguments, and for that reason, I have to buy it just so that we are not all the same. Nice, so, Mike. I like it. So I, I like Mac Jones this week, but I mean, two two touchdowns. Come on, Mac. You can you can get that done. Yeah. It's just one more than one. <laughs> just once you throw a touchdown, just throw another. Just do one more. That was buy or sell from pristineauction.com. You can use the registration code BALLERS, and they'll give you 10 bucks towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. An update uh, on the Eric Ebron situation. He's going to miss extended time. He's bracing for potential knee surgery. The obvious fantasy implication here is Look, the focus was on Pat Fryermuth anyways. Mm -hmm. Ebron was not a startable asset at any point this year, uh, but him missing time guarantees a target volume to Pat Fryermuth that will be sustainable throughout the remainder of the season, making him a viable fantasy start. What was really upsetting um, was when Eric Ebron actually came back last week. You saw him take snaps away from Pat Fryermuth, take targets away. They were kind of sharing the workload between those two, which previous to Eric Ebron getting back healthy, uh, Fryermuth, you thought, had just had the established breakout. And it, it, like he, he won the role. He was the victor, and, and he wasn't. But then, then uh, someone looked down from above and said, uh, you're up. You're up for the rest of the season. You are going to be the guy at tight end, and I I let you loose. They are gonna they're gonna loosen up the targets. Yeah, I mean Pat, who, <laughs> Pat Fryermuth or Kyle Pitts rest of the season. <laughs> Kyle Pitts. Is yeah, it which close? one has a, it's 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 not as far as it used to be, but only one of them has a chance to go for one sixty three in a game, and uh, that's Kyle Pitts. But it is it's closer. Fryer Muth will – it'll still come down to getting into the end zone, something he's been yep. good at. Eric Ebron was the number 11 tight end last week, you know, so there will be opportunity there. This is a team that uh, is going to get a bunch of defensive pieces back and going to be in the mix the rest of the way. So if you, if you choose Fryer Muth in that situation, I don't blame you. I really don't. I think the it's – Muth a is Luth. Yes. Uh, which, by the way, we are going to have a Muth is Luth shirt. Up oh, on. we are? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I've already got the, the wheels are in motion. Oh, and, uh, I'm so happy. Shopballers.com will have that within a week or so. Zach Wilson will start Sunday against the Texans. In fact, Mike White and Joe Flacco, they won't even be available to, to come into the game if it goes sideways. I actually have the Jets winning this week and um, against Houston. With but, Zach Wilson? With Zach Wilson, <laughs> Mike White and Joe Flacco are both on the reserve COVID list. Flacco's out for at least two weeks as he is unvaccinated. Titans news. Let's have Titans time here. Adrian Peterson was waived. Dontrell Hilliard signed to the active roster. So he quick, did a, quick analysis there. Yeah, quick analysis is that Vrabel thought, let's bring in the vet and see what he's got. And then they saw what he got and they said, let's – Go with the guys who have more juice. I put Deonta Foreman as the main back that I would want here. He looks decent. Um, I'd and, rather have Hilliard, and th and that well, that's fine because of the pass catching work. Especially McNichols is still around. Like the the only reason that Hilliard got in last week is because Jeremy McNichols was in concussion protocol. Had that never happened, those ten targets probably go to McNichols. Having said that, you feel like. Hilliard's performance was enough to push him f a little Probably bit if ahead Mc of McNichols. If McNichols is out, I'd prefer Hilliard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if I guess if I'm going straight runner, then it's going to be uh, Foreman. Yeah. Marcus Johnson, Ugh. injured reserve for the hamstring injury, so the yeah. Titans then signed Golden Tate to the practice squad. Uh, so when you're looking, like we had a waiver show yesterday. We didn't really talk about We talked about uh, Westbrook Akeen. Uh, how do you pronounce Ike it? Westbrook Ikine. Ikine, not yep. Akeen. Yep. But we didn't mention I think Chester Rogers is there too and, and could get uh, – you talk about 10 targets going to Dontrell Hilliard. There are targets to go around there. Mm -hmm. there um, are. We joked about the fact that Patriots just won't know who your number mm -hmm. one is because it's all number four options. So that's what's going on with Tennessee. I'd be avoiding most – Tennessee. Tennessee players. This news is here for one reason. The 49ers have, oh! 
<laughs> have signed veteran wide receiver Devin Funches to the practice squad. Oh. And we brought that back, and it's yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, 49ers. Kareem Hunt has been designated to return from injured reserve. He can now practice. Uh, he has to be activated to play. It's a bit complicated if we don't get the news right away, but I think they have to do it by Saturday. So uh, I think it's like Saturday at 1 o'clock or something like that. I believe they, so, yes. They, the Cleveland-Baltimore game Sunday night, right now the indications to me are that he's going to play. Yeah, you. I mean, the majority of time, not certainly not always, but the majority of time when guys have been activated for that 21-day window, it's because they're ready to go back into the lineup and play. They don't usually need the 21 days. Um, so I expect him to play, but you, we will know before Sunday morning. Logan Thomas was also designated to return. Could be a big boost to the Washington offense to get him back. He is extremely necessary. Who was Mr. Necessary of, of days of old? Charles, Charles, Clay. Charles Clay. Yeah, yeah. Logan Thomas is so important to this offense. Uh, no confidence personally with Curtis Samuel's return to be impactful, but I know Logan Thomas will be impactful. Yeah, I mean, this is not just huge news for the Washington football team, but huge news for fantasy because yep. there are plenty of teams out there that are playoff bound or at least in the running who don't have the tight end position locked down. And Logan Thomas looked great. And then the role that he has inherited, keep in mind they paid him a lot of money, has gone to one dude at all times. Ricky Seals Jones just took that spot and was used and was relevant for fantasy, and he's not as good as Logan Thomas. When Logan Thomas comes back, he's just going into that full time role and will be, you know, a, a, I feel like a, a weekly top five start. I agree. And I do plan on inheriting a number of roles on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, for, for what it's yeah. worth. So much dinner butter. <laughs> dinner butter? Dinner rolls. Is that different butter than lunch rolls? butter? Oh, dinner butter is way different. <laughs> dinner butter is always it's, whipped. It's uh, you know, oh, dinner butter is a step up. It's left. Oh yeah, you don't want lunch butter. You ever had that. breakfast butter? Breakfast butter is cold and hard. It's dumb. Oh wow. Yeah. Really? No. I no <laughs> no. This is all just made up because I said dinner butter. <laughs> but uh, I love me some rolls. Uh, and that's the that's the we need to focus there. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, both listed as non participants on Tuesday. That was another estimated practice report. They're both very questionable for this game. Um, Tony, I, I, Tony, I, Tony, Tony. It might be it might be more Ty Montgomery than it is even Tony. I mean, Tony, 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 Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr. I think that Alvin Kamara, and Mark Ingram will both play. Really, you think I Kamara do. plays? I think that they might both be out there, and I think it might be a really, really uncomfortable because they play the Bills, right? So that is going to be. A bit uncomfortable. Yeah, this this will be a volume play. Like, Ty Montgomery did practice in full on Tuesday, but he is coming back from the. If you remember, he very very much dislocated a finger uh, about a week ago. So okay, just just something to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, the useful thing is if Kamara and Ingram are out, are you playing Tony Jones against the Bills? If they are both out, I think Tony Jones becomes a break glass in an emergency volume. I play. agree over Devonta Freeman. Uh, I'm no, sorry, no, no. not Devonta Freeman. Uh, Deontay Foreman. Yeah, I think I would. They're both bad matchups. Uh, I would be more confident in the workload for Jones. Yeah, I did. I, man, I, I think, think so I go too. Foreman there, but that's. It, I agree that he's he's definitely in volume consideration if the other two are out. We will keep you up to date with CD Lamb. Right now, he is uh, DNP on Tuesday. Not unexpected. There's a lot of optimism that CD Lamb can go on Thanksgiving. It would kind of bump Cedric Wilson out of starting consideration, but maybe not completely uh, for the the Cowboys. But if Lamb is out there, him and Gallup should should get it done. So hopefully he's out there. Make Thanksgiving better. Jared Goff, this is outstanding. I'm so <laughs> thankful for for this news. Yeah, Dan Campbell. Dan just, Campbell's a heck of a guy. He's a lovable goof. I mean, um, Guns Mahoney. Thank you. He's considered. Uh, Goff considers himself a game day decision. Dan Campbell first came out and said that he's leaning towards starting him and then said, quote, and I, I am quoting, it's 60% that Goff starts leaning towards 50-50. <laughs> so what in the heck does that mean? Mm, it means that there's a 60% chance he plays, but that 60 is actually much closer to 50. Okay. Yeah, to me, I could take that as like it was 60, but we're leaning 50-50. That's, yeah. that's worse. It was 60 when I started this sentence, but it's now it's 50. closer to 50. Honestly, why don't we just split the difference just, here? 55! 
Yeah, we maybe, knew what we want today. Maybe he forgot the rules of rounding. 60% he was like, of the time it works. I don't know which way to go. There so, are no oh. fantasy implications of any kind to Jared Goff versus Boyle. It doesn't change that you want to play the Bears defense. It doesn't. Maybe it upgrades Jamal or something. To me, I'm like I, I've Gian, got Swift is in your lineup no matter what. Swift is in no matter what, and Hawkinson is probably in no oh, matter what. Oh, that would what, help. But that's the Hawkinson. one. Like I've got Hawkinson. I'm like I. I would prefer Jared Goff. Did you see this morning our uh, our tight end battle of the year? That Hawkinson and oh Pitts, yes, Hawkinson and Pitts through eleven weeks. Mike, did you see this? No, hit me. They're both averaging exactly nine point one fantasy points per game. Yeah. So they are there. I I looked at them. I'm the winner. <laughs> no, I'm the winner. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, the Giants fired Jason Garrett. So thank you for doing that. Um, yeah. But is no. there like a three strikes you're out on the retread market? I mean, what is the you got What's the look. story about like Jason Garrett had his time? Uh, like he had a very successful run. Um. Well, you know, whatever. A, a, a successful run as a head coach. The NFL has moved past Jason Garrett's <laughs> ideals and philosophies. We're about beyond football. Garrett. Yes, like the, the BG. game. <laughs> so, thank you for. Uh, we appreciate you, Jason Garrett. But did d you don't come back? <laughs> did you see what Des Bryant tweeted? No. Des Bryant, you know, yes. uh, former player, superstar for uh, Jason Garrett. He said he tweeted after hearing the news about JG Jason mm -hmm. Garrett. Uh, new line. Kadarius Tony, you will get to experience the love and joy of football throughout your career. Oh my yeah. goodness! Oh, 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 get body into Jason the Garrett. body bag you go. I think Des Bryant has gone from attempting to play football again to being a social media. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, he's a he's a uh, full NFT guy. Yeah, what up I'm, and bodying the various people. But Giants fans, it is good. Don't never fear. Jason Garrett is out. Freddie, Freddie Kitchens is up. Yeah, Freddie so, Kitchens. Yeah, Freddie Kitchens plays a specific role on your franchise, which is not to be your leader, but to be somebody tra transition to when you fire somebody. Yeah. That's what he should do. Uh, all right, there will be an injury blitz podcast. Brooksy, is that still Friday? Yes, sir. Okay, and the Foot Clan game day alerts will be there Sunday. Join the Foot dot com for all that. That was today's news and notes, brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the Sleeper app, join their breaking alerts channel, and it is extremely fast at getting you the news. That you need. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. I'm so thankful for this segment today, which I'm thankful every week for this segment, but this one forced our hand at looking at something very important that sometimes takes a little bit of effort. Uh, to do, and we'll just give it to you with no effort needed. So we'll do the working. Yes, because uh, we're never not. Yeah, some some people on our staff are never not <laughs> working, but we want to work a little harder. Guarantee success. That's the extra thing that you need to do to win. And we're looking at dynasty leagues today. We're looking at dynasty leagues and the implications of free agency, namely which players are going to be unrestricted free agents at the end of the year. Uh, trade deadlines have either hit or are hitting soon. Yeah, they're they are about to hit for most dynasty leagues, and that so the timing of this, I, I love it. This is where you try, you you throw out that line. You go, you buy your scratchers of these players are going to see new scenarios, and their value could skyrocket if uh, they find a new in home. terms of of dynasty value. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure where we want to go here, but I'll, I'll start with the running back position. You know, one of the shifting backfields is going to be Arizona. James Conner and Chase Edmonds will both be unrestricted free agents. One could come back to Arizona. Um, I think the team loves James Conner. Seems like it. And, uh, you know, Edmonds has had trouble. I doubt both come back, to be honest with you, but it's possible. But that's a scenario where you could you could roll the dice uh, the Tampa uh, Bay running back situation is the same with Leonard Leonard Fournette's an unrestricted free agent as well as Ronald Jones. That's the one I wanted to bring up was the the Tampa Bay backfield. Um, it 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 blows my mind that Ronald Jones is 24 years old. Um, you know he he's yeah. been in the league a while. He's a vet. He's gonna go on to his next contract, and I think that the, that he has the chance to maybe switch teams to a team that wants to utilize his skill a little bit more. He is a good running back. He's not a pass catcher, but as a first and second first down. and second down runner, he's 
He's talented, and he's kind of been just so usurped by Leonard Fournette and the system that Brady wants to run. I, I think he has no value this year and could have good fantasy value going forward. Darrell Williams, Melvin Gordon, Cordero Patterson, Dearness Johnson are also uh, free agents. Dearness is a restricted free agent. Looking at the wide receiver position. Yeah, this is where it's juicier. Yeah, I mean, Devontae Adams is a an unrestricted free agent, so he could get franchise tagged yeah. by the fr by the team. Um, if he doesn't get franchise tagged, I he will. You just can't let a guy like Adams walk, and I would imagine he'll get the franchise if they don't have a contract. Yeah, it, it's tough because if it, if a player of his caliber is very unhappy with the nature of the Packers organization, you do wonder if he could force himself out the door with Rodgers. Have there been discussions there when they were looking at long term deals? Those things are still possible. Um, Chris Godwin is a, an unrestricted free agent, was franchised last year. Allen Robinson, same story. He'll be a free agent. It hasn't been impressive. He's 28 years old. But other names, I'm going to blitz them and you tell me some of the highlights. But Mike Williams, Will Fuller, Christian Kirk, Michael Gallup, okay. Jacoby Myers. Gallup is the name that I think Just is – Just 25 years old. He is extremely interesting that we have seen enough of Michael Gallup on the football field to confirm that he is – he's good. And he can go to a team – and truly be their number two. I think the, that's what he is. The only reason that Michael Gallup got usurped is because the Dallas Cowboys were in the draft and CeeDee Lamb fell to them. And at that point of the draft, like, is how do you pass on what, what a lot of teams had as the number one wide receiver in the draft? And he's right there for you. You just take the best player available and you figure it out from there. But Michael Gallup is somebody that – it's possible right here at the deadline that you could Trojan horse him into the trade. Like maybe there's another player on a manager's team that you've got your eye on, and then you get Gallup kind of tossed in, wink, wink, to balance out the deal, and then you let the chips fall and see if Michael Gallup turns into uh, uh, a starting uh, starting dynasty piece. It's nice because if you can do that and you need to start him this week, you can do that as well. On, on the flip side with Chris Godwin, if he leaves and goes somewhere else, do you think his value goes up or down? down. I think there's a potential for it to go up. I do. Really? Yeah, because he's going to get paid a lot of money, and you are in a situation here, at least of late, the last couple of years, where it's a three-headed monster. I think Godwin is the player that could go at least have neutral value someplace else at his age, being only 25 years old. You know, Mike Williams... Uh, is interesting. Juju, uh, you know, you have to bring him up. Because, yeah, you do. Because at 25 years old with his with his pedigree, there's a chance he makes a lot of money. Now, it might be on a franchise that you're not happy with. The, he seems like the kind of player that, uh, you know, the Raiders or the Jets or the, you know, one of these teams that pays big money for big names. I mean, possibly, because we expected him to have a market last year, and they're – there wasn't. I mean, it was the Ravens uh, allegedly offered him more money than the Steelers, and he said, no, I'm, I'm going to come back and try to rebuild my value with where the team where I'm comfortable, and then he got hurt. There really, Yeah, and there really wasn't value, though, or long-term value for anybody last year outside of Kenny G's deal because – And Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, man, um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look at tight ends as well. Mike Gesicki's an unrestricted free agent. Dalton Schultz, Evan Ingram's going to depart, I think. Uh, Zach Ertz, a lot of talk in Arizona about bringing him back. He is, right now, the tight end four on the year in total points. That's crazy. And, so, and he's a good fit for Arizona. Like The free agents, the, the two that stand out to me, it's not necessarily those players. It, it will be the fantasy fallout yes. of those players leaving. Like For Tyler Conklin, Irv... Uh, Big Irv Smith up there in yeah, let's remember that name in Minnesota. He what was he like? Had a meniscus tear or something right before the season. So he it was a lost season. But he was an up and coming tight end, and I think that he would be doing what Conklin is doing right now and more. And uh, I I understand it's it's hard to hear hear from me because I've supported him before. But if Dalton Schultz finds a bag of money for a different team. Blake Jarwin is still under contract and still getting paid a decent amount of money, and he could turn into – he could get that Dalton Schultz role back next year. I'm not I'm not standing for Jarwin again, but just saying that is in the realm of outcomes. I also want people to be aware of the situation – Yes, in, Dr. Schultz, in, I'm sorry. In Los Angeles with Jared Cook. Yes. Uh, yes Donald yes, yes. Yeah, Parham, Parham 
Donald Parham is is 24 years old, attached to a great quarterback. He is um, an exclusive rights free agent, so he'll be back. Yes. And Cook will not be. So Parham, I think, has some juice and some potential in that offense. You just need it to be uh, consolidated into fewer tight ends there with Steven Anderson and Parham and Cook. He is such a good dynasty target. I think so. And he, he'd be nothing. He'd be You could throw him into a deal. People would probably it almost alerts people when you throw them into a deal of like wait why sh why would you even want this player yeah. would you trade if you're a good team and so your pick's gonna be low would you be willing to trade a second rounder like a a lower second for part that's him? that's but, too hefty it's for a me. little aggressive okay because I think I can get a top drafted tight end in the second round yeah sure in the but but I I hear what you're saying and there's potential there for Parham in the future David and Joku. A free agent as well. The big, the big three tight ends of 2017. Oh yeah, oh, OJ yeah. <laughs> Howard, David Njoku, and Evan Ingram. They will probably be changing teams, and one of them I think will find a, a resurgence in his career. And uh, that was never not working. A reminder: you can get up to 100 percent dandruff protection. That's never not working with Head and Shoulder Scalp Shield technology. Available at Walmart.com. And ladies and gentlemen, before we move into the Turkey Day Awards, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped, longtime sponsor of this show. And look, I love Manscaped. I love the brand. I love their products. They have the best body hair trimmer on the market. And listen to this. All new, ultra premium body wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. They've got everything you need now, fellas, at manscaped.com, and you can use the code FOOTBALLERS20 for 20% off. They have got you the seen the containers? Oh, yeah, I have. They're it. metal. Yes, they're, they are serious business. If I get attacked in the shower, I could use one of those <laughs> to defend myself. I'm just and saying. You'll be safe. Yeah. And you're going to smell great. I know. And be clean. Yeah. And you can get the performance uh, performance package 4.0. Self-defense. It, it comes with a bunch of stuff like uh, anti-chafing deodorant, moisturizer, toner. Uh, it Like I said, Manscaped, longtime sponsor, and have been using them for many, many years. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. And we want to thank Embark. Uh, did you know that 72% of people don't know what kind of dog they have? I've been there. Okay, I res what kind of dog you got? I, I uh. rescued a dog from the shelter. And I'm not sure. It's a mutt. It, right. You know, you're not sure what the breed is. Well, now you can decode your dog's story with an Embark dog DNA test. You can find out the exact breed. You can find out so much about, cool. um, about your dog to help them live healthier happier lives be able to take care of them the way that their breed needs 37 percent of embarkers take an action to improve their dog's care after they test with embark help dogs live happier healthier and longer lives by giving unique information that they need to personalize the care plans based on their unique dna it's developed by phds and veterinarians their their breed plus health kit provides the most accurate accurate breed identification and this holiday season you can understand your dog better with Embark, the highest rated dog DNA test. Right now, Embark has a limited time offer on their breed and health kit and purebred kit for our listeners. Go to EmbarkVet.com to get free shipping and save $64 off with the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's EmbarkVet.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS to save $64 and get the perfect gift for a happy, healthy holiday. You can't do that test on yourself and find out if you are indeed a dog. Uh, There's only one way to find out. Yeah, you tell me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Turkey Day Awards. We do this every year. I'm 20% Dalmatian. <laughs> uh, are there any dogs with huge heads? Because <laughs> I would. Oh yeah, there you are. You don't need DNA for. Yeah, bulldogs. All right, um, you're the bulldog of the show. Bow wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's from. That's a blast from the past. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, every year we do the Turkey Day Awards, and um, we don't know the, the actual winners. Who picked these? Was it you, Brooks, or was it Kyle? It was both of us. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> consensus <laughs> answers. I love, I love mocking him. Um, 
The idea was, I don't Thanks know why. Thanks for getting this cool, fun segment ready. All right, so the first award is uh, is titled Tiffany's Mashed Potatoes. Tiffany is Jason's wife. It used to just be the mashed potatoes, but she makes the best in the world. So it's the Tiffany's Mashed Potatoes. Let me describe them. A rich she, dinner butter. This guy probably mm, she uses great dinner butter. Uh, a rich buttery glob of mashed potatoes is what everyone needs to add body to their plate. It's as dependable as they get, and we all know butter makes everything better. That is the descriptor. What player matches that description? I do not know these answers, so we are we are taking our guesses. Look, oh, it's man. it's hearty, it's dependable, it's delicious, and it's gonna you know, it's it's big. And you know who else is big? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Jonathan Taylor for my as dependable as the mashed potatoes. My dependable, delicious mashed potatoes. I think I'm gonna go with Cooper Cup. Okay. I mean, no one more dependable than Cooper Cup week in and week out. Um, I think of Cooper Cup as dependable with the target totals and stuff like that. Who do you got, Mike? You got a guess? I mean, it, it also could be Jalen Hurts. He has been mm. oh. very dependable. Uh, but I'm going to go – I'll go with the running back. I'm going to go with uh, Jonathan Taylor touchdown. It is Cooper Cup. Oh, come on. You know what's funny is that – that is what I wrote down as my first answer to this. And you pivoted? Well, when I got to the end, the very last one I saw was just the MVP. And I thought, well, that's got to be Cooper Cup. All right, the burn dinner rolls. This is the second award. Gosh, you put so much time and effort in preparing the meal, but unexpectedly oh, the rolls man. got burned. Oh, It's yep. a disappointment. Yep. Sometimes you just have to scrape the carbon shavings off or throw it away in sadness. Mm. Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. It has Robinson. to be, right? It has I mean, to be Allen Robinson. If, if, it's, if it's not... Then someone else has Look, been a massive Dinner rolls are great. You burn them, you got to throw them away. Yeah. Allen Robinson is great. You drafted him. Whoops. He burned you. You got to throw it away. Yeah, and he went higher than some of the other disappointments out there. So it is Allen Robinson. I just yep. checked the okay. winner. Allen Robinson is the burned dinner rolls. You're it's unanimous. And I'm very sorry because he is not entering free agency with the same gusto as he would have uh, as he did last as year. As a dynasty manager that has him, I was looking at my roster today and I'm thinking, oh, I. I you had a plan. I had a plan. <laughs> I was waiting to be able to trade him for a young stud and a pick. Whoops. But now it's like <laughs> he's got to go somewhere. And because now I'm I hoping. legitimately looked at your roster like last night and this morning. I'm looking deadline and I saw him on there and I did not envy your position <laughs> at all. I was like, this guy was something completely different in all of our minds in fantasy. I literally. You know, assuming that Allen Robinson plays this week, which I don't think he does, he's not going to. But if he was, I made the decision to still start Robbie Anderson over him. Oh, 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 oh by the way, uh, real quick follow up there. Darnell Mooney has been limited. We do need to monitor that heading into the Thursday game. Oh, OK. He was limited last week, too, I think. All right. The sweet potato casserole. This is a heavy, hearty, delicious uh, treat for the first few bites, but you can only have so much before it makes you vomit all over the floor and thus completely ruin Thanksgiving and your family calls you a no good husband. Mm. That's yes. a descriptor I didn't remember <laughs> from days gone by. Uh, healthy for the first few bites, but then it doesn't work out. That's Mike Williams. I Ooh. mean, oh. I mean, got off to just a, a fire start, and if you continued starting him every week, you've been mostly throwing up. I think that's the right answer, but I think Patrick Mahomes fits it as well. Hearty oh, few bites, man. and then kind of, uh, it's been tough. Yeah, it's got to be Mike Williams. Ooh, it's oh, not, there's it, another good answer it, here. It's none I of the it. above. I it's see the DJ answer. Moore. Oh, of course. Yeah, that yeah. was much. Uh, Those are both good answers. It started wonderfully. Yeah, yeah, DJ Moore and Mike Williams share a story. <laughs> uh, the kind of got a we, we got a puke and rally situation here for DJ Moore though. You think? Yeah, uh, we'll find out this week. <laughs> puke and rally. Wait, All wait, right. Wait. Who would you rather have rest of the season, Mike Williams or DJ Moore? Mike Williams. Mike Williams. Okay. I would go DJ Moore. Yeah, I I, I get it. it's close, but it's quarterback. Okay. The Mike Wright Special Award, which is you know Mike is famous. If you're new to the show. He's famous for famous, be yes. for bemoaning and descendants bemoaning uh, Thanksgiving turkey and turning to Jack in the Box for his meal of choice. This is a random dish that somebody brought because well they're convinced Thanksgiving food is trash and outdated. Time to stop with the old way of thinking. Open your eyes and realize this could be the best thing ever. I'm going James Robinson. Always looked really? at as yeah, you know it's like ah oh, he's not good. He's this afterthought, but actually he's great. 
So that's how I interpreted this question. Well, I'll I'll turn over a new leaf here, and I will go with Jalen Hurts. I think it oh. is. I think it. He has convinced me that um, the way he's progressed as a quarterback, uh, more on the field than the fantasy numbers, which were always there. But I, I'll go Jalen Hurts. I think. I think uh, I've got to stop with my old way of thinking. I like it. I like the Jalen Hurts one call a lot. I'm going to go just somewhere else. I'm going to go with the the ultimate new hotness. Mr. Jamar Chase, okay. wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, well, this answer is better than all of them. The actual answer is Cordero Patterson. But that's like old busted new that hotness. That is a random. <laughs> it's old busted old new, new hotness. hotness. It is a random dish. <laughs> Nobody thought right. yeah, they yeah, didn't yeah. think to bring it to the table, mm -hmm. and suddenly everybody wants a bite. I mean, that's the perfect name because if it really is the winner of this category, we wouldn't even think of them. Yeah, <laughs> that's we perfect. didn't. Yeah, way to play into that. Yeah. All right, the last one, the Thanksgiving Day turkey, of course. The showstopper, the MVP of Thanksgiving Day, that's got to be JT. Taylor. I was going yep. Cooper Cup, but I have now switched to Jonathan Taylor. I Which agree. Which is the answer. Jonathan Taylor is the MVP. Uh, I think Derrick Henry was well on his way to compete for that award, but Jonathan Taylor has now finally passed him both in reality and in the rushing totals. So, All right, uh, let's talk about these Thanksgiving matchups. Let's start here with the Bears. The Bears and the Lions on uh, Thanksgiving Day. Three wins between them. All of them, the Bears. Uh, one, the draft, one tie. The, uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Bears minus three. The over-under is 41.5. Oh, you got to love that morsel on Thanksgiving Day of points. Uh, both offenses bottom five in yards per play. Both in bottom five points per play. Detroit's hit the over once. The Chicago Bears have hit the over three times. Matt Nagy versus Dan Campbell. And we have we this, even reported no, that No, we Matt, haven't. I was saving it for this. Matt Nagy, it's been reported, will coach his last game. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. He, he was asked the question, um, point blank, congratulations to the reporters having <laughs> That's the, some stones. the stones to be <laughs> like, hey, so how do you feel about the report that you're about to be fired? Uh, he said – that's he has not been told that he's had great communication um so maybe this was leaked they in 101 years uh the, the ownership group of the Chicago Bears have never fired a coach midseason they need to change that I, I'm guessing the discussions they had might have included the words don't tell Matt <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so you know kind of a, a lame duck game for Matt Nagy potentially Andy Dalton will start this one Detroit's not an intimidating matchup for Andy Dalton. They they have weapons, Darnell Mooney, David Montgomery. There are reasons to be kind of optimistic here. They're favored in the game. 22 points has to go somewhere. I think Montgomery and Mooney are pretty locked in this matchup. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, I would play them both, and I think in, in a pinch you could – uh, play Cole Komet, who again the behind this the behind the scenes numbers, snap counts, routes run. Um, he's out there a lot on the Detroit Lions side of the ball. I mean, we talked about it earlier. DeAndre Swift is auto locked in, and Hawkinson is probably locked in because of his position. And then you you move on and you just apologize to your family uh, that this is one of the national games on Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay, I think that's a fair summation. The Raiders. At five and five, play the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Cowboys are seven and three. A huge bounce back week for them, and then they went into Kansas City and looked a little shaky on offense with no weapons. Uh, DraftKings sportsbook line at home: the Cowboys minus seven and a half. The over one, the over under is fifty one points. Hmm. Gives the Cowboys just under thirty. The Raiders at twenty one point eight. The points scored uh, since what the bye week. 14, 16, and 13 for the Raiders. I know that there has been, you know, you tied it into Henry Ruggs leaving, which, you know, we helped the offense, but I don't think it's all of that. I think it's the head coach transition. I think it's um, a lot going on with the Raiders. And the question here is, is Dallas's defense going to be able to stop them at home? I think the answer is probably yes, and that puts you in a tough place starting Raiders. Dallas's defense has been awesome. I know that Dallas had a very disappointing outing against the Kansas City Chiefs, but it was all offensively. They held the Kansas City Chiefs to 19 points, and outside of that one crazy game against you know Denver where no Cowboys showed up, the Cowboys defense has been good. So the fact that they've been good and the Raiders have been struggling, um, I'm – 
not inclined to play just about any Raiders. I mean, it's similar to the Lions. Darren Waller is obviously locked in. He's a tight end, and he gets a ton of targets, so he's in. And then Josh Jacobs is someone that he gets enough volume where you know he is getting targets. Yeah, he's he's fantasy relevant. Outside of that, I mean, I guess you can go Renfro. I don't want to play with Brian Edwards or I would look. Brian Drake. Edwards, I believe, had zero he had, targets he had last zero, week. Zero and zero targets, I would zero I would catches. play him this week, but uh, the 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 uh, the digs coverage. I'm just a little concerned about that. That Brian Edwards won't break through. I can't that. tell if you're being sarcastic. I think he's being sarcastic. <laughs> okay. I think he's. I'm just saying at the end of this game when Edwards has zero receptions, it's not because of Edwards. <laughs> Which is totally against the Giants. It was also not because of Edwards. No, they, they schemed him out. They took out the number one option. Also the Ooh. 0.9 against the Chargers, another schematic unlocking yes. of Brian Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. I, I'm glad you were being sarcastic. Uh, on the other side, we did get some updated news on CeeDee Lamb. Uh, Mike McCarthy said he has not missed a step. If he's if, if he keeps progressing, we see him being available for Thursday against the Raiders. That's wild. That is uh, good news for Dak Prescott managers. That's good news for the whole offense. That's great news for Zeke. It is. And Zeke's going to play. He says uh, he's a tough guy. He's going to play through it. The Did he say I'm a tough guy? He says I'm tough. I will play through it. <laughs> wow. So. Um, the most important thing to me is uh, Tyron Smith. Uh, whether or not he's active, it, there's optimism that he will play on Thursday. That will help. Um, Zeke, over the last two years, and there's a big sample size for him being in the game and out of the game, over 20 yards more rushing um, in games that Tyron Smith plays. Dak is much better. So if he's – it looks right now that he's going to start. I, I really like the Cowboys' offense. One area of vulner vulnerability – Vulnerability. Well, vulnerability. <laughs> well, I was doing the half speed. Mm. Um, for the Raiders, it's the tight end position. They're actually 31st in the league against tight ends. They give up 15 oh. points a game. The doctor. Dr. Schultz looks all right. <laughs> I can't just said that out loud. Yeah, right. and it felt good, didn't it? I, I Look, I'm willing to be persuaded by the <laughs> listenership who decided that that was okay. All right. Uh, but I think Dalton Schultz is solid this week. He's probably gelling. Oh, no. Oh, yes. oh, no. It's just so – I don't know how to feel about it. I guess I have to lean in. Yeah. Zeke, uh, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Dalton Schultz. What about Tony Pollard? Are you willing to take a shot on him this week? Uh, Raiders are not a good running defense. Zeke a little banged up. I mean, he – Pollard has been – Ramondre or Pollard? Oh, that's – that is a good question. Tony Pollard has been in the top 24 uh, the, each of the past two weeks. That was after a really rough stretch. Uh, so I lean – I think Ramondre is more guaranteed of the workload. I agree with that, but the matchup and – man, that, that is and a really Zeke good the limitations. Comp. The Zeke limitations, Amari Cooper being out, possibility for a, an extra target or two. Um, I, I slightly lean Pollard here. Okay. The Buffalo Bills at six and four take on the New Orleans Saints, who are five and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Bills on the road, six and a half point favorites in New Orleans. It's not been pretty for New Orleans. Yeah, the over under is forty five points. This is one of those matchups that is really. I just don't see it going a different way, even though the Bills have been struggling. That being said, Sean Payton's a great coach, but schematically, can you do enough? You know, you saw the Bills. Well, Jonathan Taylor, an elite talent. You know, uh, a quarterback in Carson Wentz that can have a nice game and Frank Reich scheming against the Buffalo defense. I don't know if you can do enough with Trevor Simeon and some amount of Taysom Hill in this game to overcome what Josh Allen and company can do. Jason and I were just looking before the game. I'm having a hard Dynasty League uh, abundance of uh, wealth <laughs> dilemma here with Josh Allen mm -hmm. against, like my instincts when I say at New Orleans are – Oh no! You know, maybe avoid, maybe pivot. I could play, uh, I could play Tom Brady against Colts. That's nice. Which is nice, but you know what? The Saints are the best. They're the best matchup for quarterbacks over the last four weeks. They have given up the most points to fantasy quarterbacks in that span. In fact, on the year, they're twenty fifth, and in the last six weeks, they're the worst. That's just crazy. So they have been. It doesn't matter. Like they have found a way, and you have enough weapons beyond Stephon Diggs. With Beasley and Sanders and Dawson Knox, you know, he was 8 for 60 last week. That was a nice bounce back game where I think I'm going to go Allen. I think I'm going to I'm gonna take the Stallion. 
I hope he's excellent for you. Uh, I have concerns here. I, I the the matchup. I get it's there, but top we, eight fantasy points to quarterbacks for four straight weeks. Like what? the the Buffalo Bills. It seems like, I mean, I, I, they smashed the Jets a couple weeks ago. I I I totally get that, but I don't know if they have completely found their way out of the scenario where defenses have figured out how to stop or not stop, but slow down Josh Allen. Now he's, he's an elite talent at the quarterback position. So that he's definitely not someone I'm trying to pivot away from. I'm just thinking through like your scenario where you have Tom Brady. Brady's playing the Colts and it's such a good match in and Indianapolis. And the, the Colts are a good matchup as well. It's just, they've been a little better of late. So I'm leaning the Allen side, but who knows? I might pivot back. Yeah, I, on the New Orleans Saints side, I, I I was just looking this up because I don't understand they had such a good defense to start the year. Right. And maybe there are several injuries I am unaware of um, with the Saints secondary or something. Um, the first six games of the season, they averaged 16 points given up. They were shutting people down. And now for the last month, they are giving up on average twenty nine point two five points, not fantasy points. Real like they're, they're having. And this is to like Tennessee. Are, yeah, didn't teams have are scoring all over them. Atlanta, and I just don't get it. Uh, it's it is one of those things where the trends on paper say that the Saints are ready to crumble, that their defense has stopped being good, their offense they've got no weapons left, everything's going wrong. They've lost three games in a row. But when I see a team that's lost three games in a row with a really good coach like Sean Payton and a storied franchise that doesn't just quit and give up and roll over, I also think they're, you know, that's, that's when the team gets it together. You know, you see teams respond off of losses and things like that. This is their like make or break moment. And this is against the bills. I'm, I'm just really confused by the saints. I certainly wouldn't. I mean, if Kamara's active, I'd be playing him in this game. You saw what Jonathan Taylor did last week, but even the week before the bills defense gave up 26.8 fantasy points to the running back position of the jets. And, um, so I, I think you can chase that a little bit and be more optimistic than you would have been early in the year with Alvin Kamara. If he's in this game, there's probably volume play. Obviously if Ingram is there and Kamara's out, you're playing him. And if both guys are out, like Mike said, you could take a shot on Tony Jones, but it's going to be a scary one. I wouldn't, yes, I wouldn't will. watch the game. <laughs> uh, but outside of them, if you have to start a wide receiver for the Saints, his name is? Traquan Smith. I agree. Yeah, you take the snaps. And then Juwan Johnson, is there a sneaky play here for him with Troutman being out? Juwan Johnson caught two last week. One was called back. Not this week. Okay. I mean, right. Juwan, in, like, in your dynasty league out there, you and I are starting him this week, Mike. Oh, that's that's fantastic. In our dynasty league. Um, but – like John Johnson is, he'll be an interesting streaming candidate if the the matchup arises. All right, and uh, a reminder, a big one: three Thursday games. Make sure you take those players out of your flex mm -hmm. position. Put them in, even if they're your flex player. Put them in a positional spot. Move those stalwarts to your flex, so that way you have flexibility if something happens at practice. Yeah, that's this is. There's never a more important week to take that advice. Also, there's a special edition of the Fantasy Footballers DFS pod just for the Thanksgiving Day slate. So if you want to have fun with some DFS, uh, listen to the Fantasy Footballers DFS pod. And before we get into the rest of the matchups, we are actually going to jump into our Starts of the Week. Starts of the Week. All right, uh, I'll kick it off at quarterback with the same player I threw out as my stream of the week, just yesterday uh jimmy garoppolo i'm gonna take him against minnesota handsome jimmy himself and uh he's the quarterback three over the last month i mean that's that's the truth and his weapons are ready to roll this week against minnesota minnesota's allowed the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks over the last month it, it's crazy but i'm gonna go with jimmy g in this minnesota matchup i don't like I don't like when you say that he's been the quarterback three over the last month. You know, I said it, couple, and I was 100% sure I was lying to you. It's a couple burst games. That I is just, the kind I, of game I would like. I really don't I really don't like that stat. Um, I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford. He's had a couple of bad back-to-back -back yeah. games. 
there were quotes coming out uh, about Odell Beckham. They, you know, they're still working him into the package. Um, and it's one of those things where I think there's a lot of fear to play him, and that that's understandable. But I am I'm still confident in McVay, in Stafford, in Cooper Cup. And if you look at the Packers defense, matchup. well, kind of. It's, tell that to Kirk Cousins last week who put up 303. Um, their two main pass rushers are gone, probably will not play this week. So I think without that pass rush pressure getting to Stafford, I think he has a bounce back game. I'm willing to start him. And in his career, he's played a lot of games in Lambeau. He has averaged 302 passing yards and 2.1 passing touchdowns per game in nice. that stadium. Interesting. And speaking of oh. fear. Oh, no, Mike. I am calling for the start oh, of the week. No, I didn't. No. The matchup says it is there. <sighs> Russell Wilson, who has been just devastating your rosters, killing you on a weekly basis. It's the get right spot. Unlimited. He's taking on the Washington football team, the absolute best matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. You saw it. Cam Newton, essentially off of the street, comes out, has a great day through the air, a great day on the ground. Chase Young is not there. And look, it's the weapons. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett will be able to manhandle the Washington secondary. And even if Russ is not on, I think that these guys can get open enough that a not completely on Russell Wilson will still hit them, and I think he bounces back into the top 10 this week. I get it. I get it. I mean, he should have an awesome game. Yes, it's just he... I've watched him lately. <laughs> and that's I been the it. thing holding you back? That's been the thing holding me back is Mr. Limited. Uh, all right. Uh, my start of the week at the running back position, I'm going to go with a Thanksgiving feast for David Montgomery. Taking on Detroit. Opposing teams know what to do against Detroit, and when you have Andy Dalton as your quarterback, you know what to do against Detroit, which is to run the ball at the highest rate in the league against them. They've allowed the second most rushing yards, third most fantasy points to running backs. He went for 23, 106, and 2 on the ground for a running back 5 finish in week 5 against them. It's going to be, um, I mean, you'll have first, seconds, and thirds for, for David Montgomery. His usage is insane since coming back. The, the first game back against Pittsburgh, 76% of the running back attempts, up to 93% this past week against Baltimore. And all of the running back targets. Yeah. like he is, he is a full workhorse. And now Detroit. Yes. Um, I love that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Antonio Gibson as my start of the week. Uh, Mike's champion, I think, is going to have a great game. If you were watching the game last week, oh. he, he fumbled inside, like, around the 10-yard line. They're driving, and he got the bench. Yes. I mean, he was completely put out uh, of the game, bench. and it looked like he was not <laughs> – it looked like he was um, He was done. And, and for fantasy, what were you going to have to do this week and decide? Are they going to continue the bench? Oh, he ended up with 20 carries, 19 carries. I mean, the – he he did everything in the second half. They forgave him and moved on. Now he he can't fumble anymore because he's got five fumbles in like the last mm -hmm. six or seven games here. But the matchup against Seattle is great. Um, Seattle's defense ranks thirty first for versus uh, running backs for fantasy points given up. Seattle's seeing the highest percentage of zone blocking scheme rush plays in the NFL, and Washington has the highest rush success rate on zone scheme plays in the NFL. So I expect 15-plus touches. It's a good bet for him to get into the end zone. And on top of that, I mean, Antonio Gibson on uh, Thanksgiving. We're one for one so far of him <laughs> of him having a, a monster performance. No mathematician. That is 100% of the time. My start of the week at the running back position – we, we did a buy or sell at the beginning. It's Devonta Freeman. He's taking on the Cleveland Browns, who have given up three straight weeks of top six production to the running back position. He's I think he's locked in. He's somehow averaging 5.1 yards per touch. He is the guy that they go to. If it's not Lamar running it in, it's Devonta Freeman. And I think that the team has seen enough of the, the running back roulette of the old fellers that they brought in that they have, they're going to move forward with Freeman as the 1A. Of course, Latavius Murray will get on the field because there's always a timeshare in Baltimore. But Freeman is the primary running back, and until I see otherwise, I'm starting him with full confidence. All right. I looked sideways at you with your quarterback start of the week, Mike. But my wide receiver, 
He's tied into him. Yes. Unlimited. DK Metcalf taking on that Washington defense we just talked about. Uh, you just discussed the rest start of the week, all the reasons why. And DK, before these past two dud weeks, has been one of the best wide receivers in all the fantasy football week in and week out. Um, still leads the league since his rookie year in end zone targets. So you know he gets action around the goal line. This is the week he reminds fantasy players that you can count on him and uh, gets players like me less afraid of moving into the playoffs with DK Metcalf. And and so I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'm going to take the uh, guy across uh, down the field to the side of the field of your uh, running back start of the week. I'm taking your teammate Darnell Mooney uh, at wide receiver. I think that uh, Darnell Mooney, his speed and – you, look, what he's done going from his rookie year in 2020 where only 19% of his targets were in that 11 to 19 yeah, mid-range, 10 total receptions, and now this year, 35% of targets tied with Stephon Diggs and Deontay Johnson for the 10th most targets in that range. The secondary of Detroit cannot keep up with Mooney's 4.38 speed. They've allowed the fourth highest expected points per pass attempt. Now, I think both are going to have a good game. But it's not going to take a huge volume for Mooney to have a good fantasy game. If he ends up with three receptions for 99 yards and a touchdown, I, I could see that happening. I just don't think they're going to be able to stop him. If they're without Allen Robinson, I think he's a s solid wide receiver too uh, this week. Going with DJ Moore. Let's bring it back, Miami. Allowing the second most points per game to the wide, re wide receiver position. Allowing the most passing yards in the league. And teams are throwing the ball 40 plus times versus the Miami Dolphins. They uh, offenses know how to attack them. And DJ Moore still has a 28% target share. He's the fifth most targets in the league. And I think with the uh, with Cam Newton re giving a resurgence to the offense, I think DJ Moore is back in play. All right. I'm going to go with Rob Gronkowski at the tight end position against Indianapolis. Came back on Monday he night. He so good. He was healthy. 59% of snaps. Targeted eight times. Had his yardage, uh, highest yardage game of the year. Tight end 10 on the week without a touchdown. He is set up to Gronk smash this week against Indianapolis, who are allowing the highest pass success rate in the NFL. And a Gronk target inside the 20. Oh, so valuable. He'll mm -hmm. have plenty of those in this game. And I think the Colts are going to, be able to keep up a little bit against Tampa. So I think this could be a fun fantasy matchup and the Colts are 31st against fantasy tight end. So why not? Uh, oh my gosh. These, these top 10 performances they've given up le recently, Dawson Knox, Dan Arnold, Ryan Griffin, Jeff Swain. So I think Gronk can compete there. <laughs> yeah. I would say the hall. Of I Famers. don't know about that. Jeff Swain. It's got it's pretty good. <laughs> um, that tight end. I am going with the doctor, Dr. <laughs> Schultz, Dr. Dalton Schultz from the Dallas Cowboys. The doctor is always available. 99% of snaps. Look, look the board, Las, board certified, board certified. Las Vegas has given up the second most fantasy points to tight ends over the last six weeks. And the Raiders also run uh, zone coverage at the third highest rate in the NFL. Here's a little brain buster for you. Which Dallas pass catcher leads the team in receptions versus zone coverage? Is the doctor. <laughs> Look, I'm not a doctor, I don't, but I can prescribe you one question. this week. Okay. All right. You can you prescribe go. a doctor. I can prescribe you a doctor. I never thought about that. Yeah. You don't need a license to prescribe a doctor. Usually it's more of like a referral. Right. But this I'm is a, a prescription. But this is a prescription. Neat. All right. My tight end start of the week. Uh, to be fully transparent. It was it's gonna, horrible. No, 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 no. no. It, it was going to be Evan Ingram uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles, but I have utilized my allotment of Evan, Evan Ingram starts of the week. Right. So One per decade. Yes. So, so. I, I couldn't go back to that. But my actual start is Noah Fant. Uh, the Chargers giving up the fourth most points to the tight end position. He is, he is running a ton of routes. He looks like he is, he is back to being integrated into the offense. The third most red zone targets among all tight ends despite missing a game and already having his bye week. He just he gets down the field, he can hit a big play, and the matchup is there against the Chargers. All right, that is it for the starts of the week, but of course we would be remiss if we didn't continue our narrative, our story, our epic. I mean, at this point, it is it an is, epic. And Amazon is talking it's, to Jason they? about yeah. picking this up. Yeah, but I'll never – I mean, it's going to cost you a billion dollars. <laughs> okay, let's get to the boom boom kicker.
Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. <clears throat> From doggy paddling, soon I was saddling a beast going full bananas. The Megalodon I rode, I used him as my commode, just like Brandon McManus. Okay. Woo! Uh, the Mountie hat went on. It was incredible. I we got to rewind. Wow. The, we got to rewind that tape. Can you hit me with that last line? That was a commode. Hit me. Hit me uh, one the more. The megalodon time. I rode. Yes. I used him as my commode. Oh, now, no. Just like okay. Brandon McManus. Okay. I'm. Yes. That, that is what I heard the first time. Mm -hmm. So you. You defecated. You are pooping all over the megalodon. And P, my friend. I'm just going. It's a number three right on top of this. Uh, so we have taken this to a, just a different. This is a dark place. You this try to keep your bells in while you ride a Megalodon, Mike. It's I, scary. I'm just thinking like if Amazon does pick it up at this, some point. This is a is dark a chapter. Rated MA or something. <laughs> Yeah, this they, we're definitely gonna have to work through the ratings. Oh Maybe my uh, gosh, you cover your blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a megalodon has a blowhole now? Uh, uh, no, they have gills. Oh my, cover your gills. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably worse. Shield your wow. eyes. <laughs> that was something special. If you if you're not watching, um, you pooped on the megalodon. Mm. That's uh, not the direction I thought this story was going. Yeah. But Happy you, Thanksgiving. You were dropped in the sea, right? You were dropped on the middle yep. of the... Um, we jumped the only thing We jumped dropped. ship. We jumped ship, and then we... Now you're riding the megalodon. That's right. That was spectacular. Not for long. All right, let's... <laughs> He's not going to be happy. <laughs> let's get in... Well, it washes away. Uh, let's get into the rest of the week 12 matchups. Fantasy Forecast. All right, back into the matchups. The Steelers at five, four, and one take on the six and four Cincinnati Bengals. I almost want to say the schizophrenic Cincinnati Bengals because they've had some up and down yeah, performances. They're, they're hard to figure out. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Bengals minus four and a half. The over/under is forty-four and a half. That's not a lot of points. Really, the Cincinnati Bengals four and a half? I, that shocked me when 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 you said that, knowing that they're getting a lot of their defensive pieces back. I'm very surprised. Uh. It's funny because when we had this first matchup in the beginning of the year, I believe there was line sub or surprise around the line then too. Cincinnati won that game 24-10 to 10 the last time they played. Only 14 completions for Burrow but had three touchdowns. They play so slow. Cincinnati is 30th in neutral pace. So when games are close, they are boring. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's no, that's a fair summation, and it's bad for fantasy. Um what do we do? Let's start with the home team here. The Bengals favored by four and a half. Joe Mixon, he is a fiery inferno right now. Yes, he is. Uh, he's being outshined by Jonathan Taylor, but he's, Mixon has seven straight games with a touchdown. He's so much better than anyone is giving him credit for. The running back four on the season. I do this for a living, and I feel like it is – I have not noticed how good he's been Um He's just dominating right now for fantasy, so you keep you stay in the flames. Last year, I think Jacobs and Mixon were both my guys for me, and they have gone in kind of different career directions, I feel like, this sure. year. Mixon has delivered on that promise, and Jacobs has been not as good. Jamar Chase, uh, he's on pace for 1,470 yards and 18 touchdowns. He is in your lineup. That, that would be like an all-time line for – not a rookie, right? His his rookie season is just it. It doesn't make sense. So for Cincinnati, though, with the defensive pieces returning for Pittsburgh, the potential low scoring game, is it Mixon, Jamar Chase, end of list? It is for me. I was going to say the Joe Burrow. I don't really want him to. I don't want to play him in this matchup with you know. Minka back and uh, TJ Watt, Watt coming back. He's throwing and, interceptions in five straight games. And I, I get he had the you know the oh, strong sorry, he game. Did not throw in last game, but before that, the strong game against Pittsburgh in Week Three because he threw a touchdown on sixteen point seven percent of his attempts. <laughs> Those is, numbers were not that sustainable. Is, that is called an impossible number to replicate. And there's just there's other 
streaming options that I would rather play. Big Ben put up his first top 10 performance as a quarterback hey. since last year. Okay. Uh, number nine. And, you know, you saw Chase Claypool come back earlier than people expected. He was very useful in mm -hmm. fantasy, nine targets. And Deontay Johnson is amazing. So facing this defense that ranks six against wide receivers, are you confident playing Claypool this week? Or would you try to find another option? I'm not confident playing Claypool. He had a very good game last week, um, but obviously we've seen several poor games, and the wide receivers have not been getting it done in general against Cincinnati. So I am, you know, he is someone that you can start. But if there's other good options, I Ma would Emmanuel uh, Sanders. I would rather go Emmanuel Sanders. Cortland Sutton. Claypool. Claypool. Uh, Kadarius Tony. Tony. Okay. <sighs> Claypool. All right, uh, Pat Fryer Muth, we talked about it before. Getting Luth. The Muth is Luth. We'll make that T-shirt so you can proudly dance around screaming that. But would you play Fryer Muth or Dawson Knox after the bounce Ooh. or the return from injury went six for 80? I would, I'd go Dawson. It's, it's a solid match up here. The Bengals on the season look pretty good against the tight end, but over the last six weeks – 30th, allowing nearly 14 points per game. And Dawson Knox was back to fully integrated into the offense. Najee Harris has accounted for 32% of Pittsburgh scrimmage yards, according to Field Yates, the second most in the NFL. You always play him. But uh, is that it? I mean, do do we have any other thought? Pro Would you stream Big Ben in no, this matchup? No, no, I'm not streaming Big Ben. I'm not playing Joe Burrow uh, the only the only other question to me is T Higgins who obviously had a terrible game but I I still think you know he's a fine enough option in the realm of you know if, if you're looking at Claypool and you're looking at um, Hunter Renfro and, over and Higgins yeah I, I think I would put him at the back of that list but he's in that category to me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at seven and three take on the surging Indianapolis Colts who are six and five games in Indianapolis. The Buccaneers are three and a half point road favorites. The, the, the Titans are at eight wins. They are at eight and three, I believe. Okay. There's like, I mean, Colts a, could easily win this. Division. A couple weeks ago, it was impossible that anyone was going to catch the Titans. The over under is 51.5. We were talking in the office this past week with, the, you know, the, the MVP front runner before last week was, was Josh Allen. I think it's Brady right now. But, you you know, Kyler's missed three games. He used to be a front runner. Dak has had some off games. Uh, it's fair, in my opinion. It won't go this way. It'll go to a quarterback, I'm sure. But Jonathan Taylor deserves consideration, and he deserves votes. And right now, there aren't even enough superlatives to describe his impact on this offense and the way it changes. I mean, they're surging because he's dominating week in and week out on yes. the level of a Derrick Henry being the identity of the Titans. So – the Colts got off to a, a, a poor start to the season, 0-3. Did you know that since that time, they've only lost twice, and both of those losses were overtime losses to the Tennessee Titans and the Baltimore Ravens? So 6-2 and two, and two overtime losses to the Titans and Ravens. Yeah, they're, they're two overtime losses away from being eight in a row. They When you say surgeon, you're not lying. Uh, and, you know. You're talking surgeon general. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, no, no. Nope. I, I switched up the surgeon right to a to, to a surgeon because you're into doctors right now. That's right with the Schultz and stuff. We didn't react because it was so good, interesting. Yeah, no, uh, I hear you. <laughs> uh, the this matchup should be fun. The over under <laughs> is fifty one point five points. So Tampa Bay has played in three games on the road with fifty plus totals this year. They did not cover in any of them. Tom Brady leads all NFL passers in passing touchdowns and yards per game. Okay. Indianapolis on the year allowing the highest pass success rate in the NFL. They have improved. If you look at quarterback performances against them over the last six weeks, they're middle of the pack. They were almost dead last over the course of the year. To make a move that big, that means they've been better than, you know, yeah, a they, lot of teams recently. And and against some good competition, they shut down Josh Allen. When you can control the game with Jonathan Taylor, your defense gets a boost just from 
rest uh, throughout the game if your offense can stay on the field. So this one is a really, really exciting game. Two explosive offenses that could really disappoint because when you're going up against Tom Brady, you really need to control the clock, and they can with Jonathan Taylor. Any uh, Carson Wentz not really wanting to play him? I uh, I think I would play him over Burrow. But, sure, but, but I'm not like I'm not. But super we're not excited. playing either of them yeah. unless it's a super flex. Yeah. Tampa Bay's defense tenth against quarterbacks, tenth against running backs, first against wide receivers over the last six weeks. So they have definitely stepped it up, found a way to scheme. They overcome have, injury in the secondary. They have, but I'm looking at their schedule because it was, you know, at the beginning of the season, it was, after the first three weeks, it was, it looked like you were going to be able to throw on them no problem. You have to keep up. You cannot run on Tampa Bay. So the, the way you keep up is through the air. But here are their, you know, starting most recent going backwards. Giants. You're not really scared of the Giants throwing on you. Washington. Eh. Not, but you're not really scared. The Saints. Chicago, Philadelphia, Miami, Patriots. Like those are they're not it, impressive. That, that's, that is a lineup of teams that your defense would want to play against for in terms of the passing offense. No one is really inspiring massive confidence there. So the the numbers could be a little bit inflated for the Buccaneers defense against. I, I think all that is to say that Michael Pittman don't be afraid of him. Don't don't yes, worry about the recent stretch. Michael Pittman should be started. I think he's a, a – Really? A, oh, yeah. I think he'll have a, a fine game. Um, last week, 2 for 23. The week before, 5 for 71. So, uh, take that for what you will. I think you probably have to keep playing him. T.Y. Hilton, don't think about it. And uh, on the other side of the ball, Tom Brady, he's a great start. Leonard Fournette. You have to adjust your expectations. For Brady or for Fournette? For Fournette. Because, because of the, of the way the, the defense has been yes. playing? Yeah, I mean, he catches enough passes that he he should be okay. I think I saw a, a stat Could recently. Could be trouble like, with. Like, Fournette is, I think, top five in running back targets. Oh, yeah, he definitely I mean, is. It's outrageous. He has he has 54 targets <laughs> through eleven through 10 games. Yeah, he's one been, short. And he yeah. did that. He did that for Jacksonville two years ago. Yeah. Where he surprised everybody and caught a billion passes. Ronald Jones uh, is just a stash at this point in case Fournette goes out. Correct. Mm -hmm. Evans and Godwin are in your lineup. Antonio yep. Brown was not spotted at practice. The I watched the press release from Bruce Arians this week talking about the injuries to this team, and he said he's making progress. You know, but it's it was tepid at best. It did not indicate he would be back this week. And if it's any indication on Gronkowski and stuff like. I think they're just going to wait for him to get right yeah, yes. and then bring him back. And They're playing for a Super Bowl. Exactly. So for fantasy players, you do have three more weeks before fantasy playoffs. So there is the chance that Brown gets back. It's far from a guarantee, but he could help you in the fantasy playoffs. I'm curious, Andy. This game, it's in Indianapolis, Buccaneers three and a half. Which way would you go on that line? Yeah, I, th I did go through my picks this morning, and um, – I took Indianapolis. Or, no, I took Tampa. I took Tampa. So it, it's going to be – it should be a fun game. It should be a good game. And we'll see if the Colts can take care of it at home. Do you like the Indy side? I, I think I do like the Indy Ooh, side. Ooh, spicy. Gronk, start of the week. Just talked about that. Moving on, the Panthers at 5-6. and six, uh, Take on the Miami Dolphins, who are 4-7. and seven. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Panthers minus 2. The over-under is 41.5. This is – my oh Andy's almost upset of the week it's kind of cheating I mean the game line is pretty close to begin with but I I like some of what I'm seeing from Miami in recent weeks uh, I like what I'm seeing from Tua I like the fact that the the defense has stepped up against the run and I think at home I think their defense can do enough to slow Cam Newton down. I mean, Cam lost last week against Washington. So um, this wasn't like he, he arrived and he delivered for fantasy. He did not arrive and deliver a victory. It has no impact how Miami, Miami's number one against the run in the last six weeks. It doesn't matter with Christian McCaffrey because he's a wide receiver as well. And in the four games since he's returned, he's went out and been the RB1, three, five, and five. That, yeah. that being said, I think they're going to slow down the passing game. I think they're going to – 
um, control the clock, and I think Tua's playing well enough to get it done. I completely agree that Tua's playing well enough to get it done. I wanted to take him as a streamer or starter, but the, the matchup the Panthers' defense has been for real. Now, the last six weeks, they've not been as good as they started the season. So this is, like, I'm hopeful for a lot of fantasy-relevant pieces in this game. Um, this is obviously the uh, the ping-pong back to benching Miles Gaskin. Um, he continues <laughs> to... I mean, it's, it's absurd, the consistency the of his... The legend grows. The legend grows. Can I grows. highlight it? Please. So since week four, and I'm going to read you the fantasy finishes for Miles Gaskin. 77, 4. Ooh. 49, 10. All right. 39. Gross. 15. Okay. 42. Yuck. 9. All right, top 10. <laughs> so Miles Gaskin is... You're, are you, he's are, doomed. I mean, I, are you, are you, he's he's the number nine. Last year in the breakout year for Miles Gaskin, he finished the 27th best running back in football. Now you might say, oh, he only played, you know, he, he came on late to get there. Well, that was, you know, that's true. But this year he's sitting at 19 through 11 weeks. So um, would you play him or Ty Johnson with Michael Carter missing? Ty Johnson. Really? Wow. Yeah, I, I, I would not. I'd play Miles Gaskin. Uh, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon. Yeah, I'd play Gordon. Uh, Damian Harris, I'd play Damian Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, last six weeks, Panthers giving up 21 fantasy points to running backs. I'm not going to lean into the red light, green light situation, despite his, despite his comedy. I, I'd still play Gaskin. Sure, uh, I think that's fine. Um, but there are a lot of pieces. Uh, Jalen Waddle's in. He Since week six, he's the wide receiver eight. He's been hyper-targeted. He's hyper-talented. So they, they did say that Devontae Parker's not ready to come back. Yeah, so keep rolling him. Um, keep rolling Mike Gesicki. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we know a goose is in his range of outcome, but he can also get 15 targets in a week uh, and uh, be fine. Uh, DJ Moore, Mike, you're start yep. of the week. So I, there's the last six weeks. I mean, just on the season, the Dolphins 31st against fantasy wide receivers and uh, last six weeks 29th. So the matchup is there for him. Just two 20-yard receptions for Robbie Anderson on the entire year, something he used to specialize in. Crazy. Um, I'm not going to put him out there. No. Uh, Tennessee, 8-3 and three against the New England Patriots at 7-4. and four. Uh, We've already kind of discussed at length this week the Tennessee offense and what they're facing. This is going to be the Ryan Tannehill plus Deonta Foreman plus Nick Westbrook, Akini. Akini. Uh, if A.J. Like Brown <laughs> bitty, bitty, is bikini, active, bikini. is he back in your lineup against the Patriots? Like bikini? Yeah. That's how you remember it? Bitty, no, bitty, that's, what he, bikini, that's what Andy bikini, said. Nick Westbrook, bikini. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. why I was laughing. It's funny. Um, apologies. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of names that we sift through. and yeah. um, What was the question? A.J. Brown. Yeah, I'm playing A.J. Brown if he's active. Yeah, I, I agree that I... 42, I 71, 39 the last three weeks. Yeah, I get it. This It's not been... And, and no. You know, yes, against Indy, he was he was great. It's It's been terrible, but he's he's talented. He's good. I will bet on the talent. But he's playing New England. Yeah, that's the tough thing. If you're going to take you away... him. And just if, give yourself a break for Thanksgiving. Don't think about this if decision. If you're going to take away your number one weapon... Uh, which the Patriots famously do. If AJ Brown is playing, he's Irrelevant. not only their only their number one weapon; he's their only weapon. All right, so let's take Just it to put the let's four put guys it to the on. Test, take Mike. it to the test. Uh, Brandon Cooks against the Jets. Brandon Cooks, easy. yeah. Uh, Elijah Moore against Houston. I'll I'm probably try. Elijah. I'll probably try Elijah. Jerry Judy against the Chargers. <sighs> I'll probably lean in and hope that Brown gives me a breakout. Yep. That one. Yep. That's Brandon Ayuk against Minnesota. Stop talking. <laughs> Brandon um, Ayuk. I'll take Ayuk. You, you I'll would take not. Ayuk. I, I Over would. A.J. Brown? Yeah. Maybe not. He's, Madness. He's coming off of an injury and three bad games and the, the Yeah, he could Patriots. go out in the middle of the game again. Yeah. That part. It's sketchy. Is, it's habitual at this point. All right. We don't have to talk a lot about the Titans then. So, well, let me – just one more question for that is if if McNichols is active, do you play him as a, as a flex-type no, player? No, The Patriots make this easy for me. Any of these decisions I'm having to make about 
names that I'm already scared to start in neutral matchups, they go away when you're in New England. Okay. So, I mean, I, that being said, I know one one pass catcher does something for Tennessee. And yeah, if A.J. Brown's out, it it might be Westbrook. Akine. Akine. <laughs> Akine. <laughs> um, but it might, you know, the week before it was Marcus Johnson. And this week it could be Chester Rogers or, you know, Ferkser or something. So, uh, New England has been on fire. Uh, they are averaging 33 points a game on offense. Mac Jones apparently doesn't like any Thanksgiving Day pies. Have you seen the... It's, it's, he said, I don't like any... He doesn't like apple. He doesn't like pecan. Have you seen the video progression of Mac Jones yes. at press conferences? It's losing seen, his soul? Yes. It I is, have seen that. It is awesome. He comes in as a rookie. He's so excited. He's happy. He's like bubbly. bouncing around bubbly in all the interviews, and now he is a deadpan under the watchful eye of Bill Belichick. He, This is the way. And, and it's working. He still seems to be having fun on the field, thankfully. Yes. They're they're playing so good. I was talking to Andy earlier. I was looking at a Week 15 matchup. Superman and, plays and, good. And what, and what uh, defenses to play. And I saw a matchup against New England, a rookie quarterback without great weapons. And I was like, oh, I don't want to play a defense against them. They're just too solid. Their defense is an awesome play this week in and of itself. They've been on fire. They're getting even better. Damian Harris from Andre Stevenson. Are they both startable in every game? Yeah, I think for the most part, until proven otherwise, I would start both of them rest of season. Would you flex Ramondre over any wide receivers on New England? The I, the roulette of Bourne, Myers, Aguilar. I would. Okay. I would. I think I'd play Bourne over Ramondre. And if if it's a PPR, I'd play Jacoby. I, Ugh, I think I'm still so playing Jacoby over Bourne for my. I mean, my sensibilities. Because I, I totally understand that, but as of snap counts, targets, as one who has had Jacoby on his roster now for a a bit, it's been terrible. Well, you know, Aside from a a backup quarterback throwing him a touchdown, it's been brutal. But that doesn't mean Jacoby. you have to play Bourne though. You could play somebody else. Correct, but yeah. but in this in this hypothetical, like Bourne has been good far more often than Jacoby. Would you play um, Westbrook Akine? Yeah. Over any of them? Yeah, I would. I'd chase the targets. Okay. 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 Any other pieces you want to talk about in this game? No, Hunter, Hunter Henry, touchdown or bust? Yep. All right. Probably touchdown. Um. Yeah. Well, because he didn't get one last week? Yeah. He's due. <laughs> the five and six <laughs> Eagles taking on the New York Giants, three and seven, free of Jason Garrett. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Eagles minus three and a half. The over-under is 45 and a half. I mentioned it earlier this week. I think the Eagles do have a shot at the playoffs. The offense, it's improving. The defense, it's getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, these games that involve the Eagles have been hitting the overs. I mean, they've averaged 53 total points the last six weeks, and they've been fun. And so from a fantasy perspective, you can look at this game and say, hey, Jalen Hurts is always in your lineup. He's the quarterback one on the year. No big deal. Put him in there. He's going to get it done. Devontae Smith, I love him this week. Miles Sanders looks good. Uh, they did what I thought they'd do, which is commit to the run, maintain that commitment, and uh, in my opinion, that he's he's a solid start. So Dallas Goddard as well. It's pretty simple on that side of the ball, right? It you, is. You're, I, not, you're not messing around with other wide outs or right running backs. So. Nope, Devontae Smith in, Dallas Goddard in, and I think Miles Sanders is a very good play miles sanders uh shockingly i mean because he's been gone for a few weeks and he wasn't you know getting a ton of work at the beginning but he is averaging five yards a carry and not that yard, yards per carry is everything but when you're at the five mark like that's really impressive stuff on the other side of the ball saquon is the headline here he'll be fine i think so i guess yeah no he'll be fine Will he? Yeah, he will. What's fine? Fine is a, a player you could start every single week. Okay. Without is the where's the ceiling though? I still think he's got ceiling games in him. I mean, you 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 you've seen some breakaway plays, and that's what he needs for a ceiling. He needs a breakaway touchdown. Um, if you don't get it, you're going to rely on a baseline of targets, six receptions this last week. 
Um, hopefully the offense without Jason Garrett can get moving more, just just be better. And if they're better, Saquon Barkley still getting healthy off of his injury, I, I, I'm not worried about Barkley at all. Kadarius Tony is the best start at the wide receiver position? Yes. Yeah. The, the Even though it wasn't a big game uh, this past week, he was the target leader by far. Well, actually, I'm, I'll cut in news just now. Oh, okay. Tony's dealing with a quad injury. Oh, come on. And is not participating in today's walkthrough practice. Uh, so some to monitor. All right. Well, um, you heard it here first. <laughs> Darius Tony is no longer a New York Giant. Um, yeah. Well, I, monitor, I don't even get that joke. Monitor the, um, monitor the practice reports. If he plays. You're still putting him out number one? Why isn't he a giant? I don't know. I didn't know where to go there. That was where you're going downhill. <laughs> Did you use all your funny up on the boom boom? Yep, the boom boom took it all, uh, siphoned it out. Do you need the hat back? Do we have the Monty, what, the Mounty hat? What the no longer giants is, just so you can understand. Yeah. You know those runaway ramps? Uh -huh. the, the big yeah, well, dirt the, the, gravel for the, truck? for the truck. Going down a mountain? Yeah. He's no longer with the team. That was the runaway ramp. That was save me uh, from falling off a cliff. I just okay. have to stop. This is going to ruin the joke and my truck. Did but. you know? The joke was you cruising down the freeway without brakes, mm -hmm. and then you had something. You had to say something. I had to say something, and, and then I, it was up the ramp. Was, there's a there's an easy pull off. Spot. Did you know that you didn't have to say something? What? <laughs> <laughs> no. This is an option. <laughs> you must make the joke, and in Jason's world, you must make the joke. It may not be. A good one. Like, if you just bailed out of a joke halfway through, I think that would have been much better than the when you're the he's not but a then New we York wouldn't have had the runaway All right, truck yeah. conversation. Discussion. When you're in trouble, I'm going to give you a tip. Okay. When you're in trouble on, with, wait, one, wait, wait. with one of notes. No, it's easy. It's a quick thing. Just say dinner butter. <laughs> dinner butter. Got just it. Just say dinner butter. You'll be fine. Um, no, I'm not touching Evan Ingram. The no. matchup always says yes for Evan Ingram. It's never, ever, ever ever okay to do this is one of the rules of the the world it's never okay you're talking about evan ingram who before last week was a top 10 tight end two weeks in a row and yeah, kyle talking, rudolph is hurt yeah i'm talking about him the guy who had an accumulation of yardage that was 15 yards in one of those games 38 and then 12 that is the evan ingram i'm talking about no uh, i uh, evan ingram is fine to stream this week evan ingram has contributed 35 percent relevant games in his career so uh yeah I I, you know he's fine to stream, Jason. I do. He's not fine to stream. Yes, he is. Philadelphia is dead last against fantasy tight ends because he's not a tight end. He, he still is, but they and the reason that they are that is because they shut down wide receivers, and then the quarterback has nowhere else to go. And you've got Kadarius Tony injured. You've got Sterling Shepard injured. You got Kyle Rudolph injured. Tony's going to be fine. I think Ingram is in the streaming yeah, consideration. Right, yeah. I'm not saying top five, but I mean, DFS lineup. But top 12, yes. Uh, is future free agent, Evan Ingram. The Atlanta yes. Falcons at four and six take on the two and six Jacksonville Jaguars. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Falcons minus one over under is 46.5 in this one. Atlanta and Jacksonville, these are not good offenses. Atlanta's 29th in total offense. Tons of turnovers. Jacksonville doing the same thing. Lowest first down rate in the NFL. And that's actually the two and eight Jaguars mistake on my part. <laughs> you were trying to make them two and six, trying to help them out? Just like when I was trying to help the Lions <laughs> out that one week. Then you left like four games <laughs> off of it, and I just read it like Ron Burgundy. I was trying to help them out. You need uh, Cordero should be back. He's going to practice on Wednesday. That is important for the offense, and that is important for the potential against this uh, Jacksonville defense that has had a couple of decent games, but overall – is one that you start your players against. So Patterson, Pitts, end of list. I'm I'm excited for Pitts to face a defense that I don't think can shut him down. They're still going to focus on him, um, but I, I don't believe that they have the personnel to shut him down, so you're going to have a good Pitts week. Yeah, and, um, you know, the targets are there every week. You just – need him to be able to get a little bit more out of him, get into the end zone. Red zone is nice. If you could get their 30th ranked offense, please do so. But Patterson has been kind of a stalwart in terms of double digit fantasy points right back into your lineup in this one, right? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, the Jaguars have been great against running backs lately, including a game against Jonathan Taylor, where after, you know, basically an opening drive or two, they, they shut him down the rest of the game. Um, but Cordero's not a running back. He's 
He's a wide receiver pretending to be running back who gets enough work in the passing game where I'm not worried about that. He only averages seven carries a game. Exactly. So. Um, on the other side, I, I love – I just – I enjoy playing players against Atlanta. It's one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. um, James Robinson? Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm always in. But Marvin Jones, can I interest you? No, you cannot. In a Jamal agnew -less Marvin Jones? That would be LaVisca Chenault. Nah. Or, I'm yes. playing with Marvin Jones in this game. I'd play him over Chenault. No, it's the Jamal Agnew going down likely because you saw Chenault go back into the slot uh, a, a bit last week, and that's the valuable role for Trevor Lawrence. And I, I, Marvin Jones could certainly hit a big play against this defense, uh, but I think that the target volume will be to LaVisca unless – the Urban Meyer goes full galaxy brain again and says that, no, Tavon Austin is going to be my slot wide receiver. So you'd play Chenault over Marvin. I'd play yes. Marvin over Chenault. Jason, where would you go? Marvin over Chenault. Okay, should we water bet this one? Should we do a little Jacksonville sure. water bet? Yes. Sure. Water bet. Nothing like a good Marvin Jones, LaVisca, Chenault <laughs> water bet. Now, Jason and I have a $100 bet this mm -hmm. year on who will score the next touchdown between Will Disley and Jimmy Graham. It is so much fun because any time that we are reminded that those players are still in the NFL and they catch a pass, we get to shame the other one. And if either of them actually catch a touchdown, it's going to be – we're just going to be clowning on the other one. Uh, Dan Arnold, are you right back to Dan Arnold in this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm not allowing one uh, terrible goose game <coughs> to uh, – <coughs> That was a long. I felt like I felt that like was longer that time. There was an extra honk there. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not allowing that to get in my way. Uh, everything we're talking about with Agnew being gone, it's not just a matter of who takes that role. It's, you know, we talk about targets are a talent. Who's going to get open? Where's he going to look? Who's he going to have confidence in? And and he's got that with Arnold. The New York Jets at two and eight take on the two and eight Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Texans oh, minus gross. two and a half. <laughs> two and eight versus two and eight. That's right. Can we just can we get a petition going to stop this? Well, I mean, they, you don't get from two and eight to three and eight without this game, Mike. <laughs> uh, the over under is forty five points. Ask the Lions about that. Okay, all right, <laughs> oh. all right. A tie would be fun. Uh, terrible teams with running backs you might have picked up on waivers yesterday. So where do you turn? I did. I did pick up one of them. Did you pick up Rex? I picked up the David Johnson. Is this in our league of record? It is. Okay. I, and I think I'm happy. <laughs> I think you should be happy. I really do think you should be happy. The, uh, the, the Jets are the worst team at stopping running backs by a wide margin. They've been the worst on the season. They've been the worst in the last six. Look now, at any stretch of games. The, the Texans have been the worst team at being running backs. That is fair. <laughs> that is fair. But we have seen games with a little bit of fantasy We've relevance. We've consolidated. And we've consolidated. You got Phillip rid of Philip Lindsay. Was cut. So I think David Johnson and Rex Burkhead can both be started. And Look, I think that <laughs> I, can we cut that clip out? I want it for the archives. Uh, yes. I, here's here's the talk good to news. me when they both have a touchdown this week. Rex Burkhead, eighteen rushing attempts. That was his most since week one of twenty eighteen. And, <laughs> That's a while. And ago. David Johnson does in fact have two carries. That went for more than 10 yards this year. Fire. Is that for the year? <laughs> yes. uh, one thing that we have seen from them throughout the year, and to Jason's point, is that regardless of success, they will always run the ball a million times. That is what they do. They don't succeed at it. I mean, Ingram doesn't. Lindsey didn't. David Johnson doesn't. Burkhead doesn't. Did you get a yard? Go get another one. And and establish it. Like, if, if some way Royce Freeman is activated for this game, then this... David Coley went back to our shows about three years ago because he has just assembled all all of these running backs that I loved at one point for fantasy football. And he's like, oh, this now's the time, 2021, put them together. You think he listens to the show? I think his podcast oh, is playing them in the wrong order. He, oh, <laughs> he started with our newest and went <laughs> yeah. oldest thinking it's newest? Yeah. Um, Tyrod Taylor did end up a top 12 quarterback last week. With 104 uh, passing yards, I would... Taylor or Joe Burrow? Taylor. No, I'll take Burrow. Yeah, the, I'll take Burrow. Taylor is... Uh, Taylor can give you 107 and nothing. Yeah, that's true. But his rushing ability... Uh, he had two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, that's Superman. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, 
and and the matchup, I I think I want the mobile quarterback. Six for twenty eight on the ground. Okay. Two touchdowns. All right, all right. Zach Wilson. No, thank you. Is Elijah Moore uh, the only wideout you're starting this week? Are you willing to to kick the tires on Jamison Crowder, who somehow ended up on our uh, dynasty league waiver wire? Did you see this? Um, our dynasty league. Yeah. What? I mean, he's on my roster now, but I did not see that. Yeah. You don't usually look for Jameson Crowder. Who cut what? Crowder? Who? I, I went look. I, I try to look in the Dynasty League just in case something shows up. And, you know, last week was Cam Newton, and this week oh, it was Jameson Crowder. That's Andy never not working. Yeah, right New, that's... Newly minted Dynasty uh, player for my team. Wow. that That's – Well, congratulations. Yeah. That was actually, Brooks, when we were talking about the, the Dynasty fab, which I have a bunch of, uh, yesterday, and you said you had none, I was about to mention <laughs> – Oh, like at that man. point, I was like, "Oh, I can just tell you I'm going to sign Crowder," and it's hilarious. Then I remembered like Al Borland was sitting there, and luckily he he wasn't smart enough to pick up on that. He's always listening. Yeah, so. what a dummy! Never listening. That's what we. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, never, never eavesdropping. I am only starting Elijah Moore uh, at wide receiver. I I can easily see a good game for Corey Davis or or James or Jamison Crowder. It's just you got to. You got to take your shot on someone, and I want the shot of the Talent. young rookie who is on fire. Um, okay, you have uh, Brandon Cooks on the other side. Yeah, I'd play him. Good play. Okay, can we not talk about this game anymore? Let's move on. Los Angeles, the Chargers, six and four, taking on the Denver Broncos, who are five and five. Fun divisional game here. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Chargers minus two and a half on the road in Denver. Over under is forty seven and a half. Um, very different game scripts for these guys to win ball games. The Chargers are up tempo, fourth and neutral pace. Pass sets up the run. Denver plays slow. They have hit the under in eight of ten games. They like to establish the run, and they can do it because they have Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams take pressure off of Bridgewater and his newly rich Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick and Jerry Judy. Mike, you talked about Noah Fant, so mm -hmm. you're kind of – you know, if Melvin's in, which I've heard you say earlier this week, and Javante's okay, and Fant is in, what do we do with the wide receivers for Denver? It's, it's only Jerry Judy for me. The for these when it's this type of a timeshare, you have to chase just the volume and the when all when all of them are active, Jerry Judy is the one who gets the volume. And I know that Cortland Sutton has the mega deal, but that mega deal was was signed after he's only seeing three targets a game essentially with when he's active with Judy. Yeah, maybe not, he was preserving himself to make sure maybe. he got the deal and now he's ready to break out. Yeah, I'm not sure that I really want to start any of the wide receivers. A three way timeshare against a really good pass defense. I I think that this is, you know, we've talked about it for a couple of years now. The personnel on the Chargers are much generally speaking, they're better against the pass and weaker against the run. Um it's evened out over the last six weeks but I, I like Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams coming off of the bye. I'm going to have my eyes on it to see if maybe that shift starts to happen where it becomes maybe yeah, it instead of a 50-50, a 55-45 type. Um, but we'll see. Other side of the ball, Herbert was the quarterback one last week. Eckler was the running back two last week only because of Jonathan Taylor. He's on pace for 1,600 total yards. 22 touchdowns. 22 he is, touchdowns. He's a beast. And then uh, Keenan Allen has been solid. Mm -hmm. Not spectacular, but yeah, solid. I mean, should, like, also known as Keenan Allen. Should we go – can I go back to Austin Eckler? For, should we be mad at Austin Eckler? Yes. I thought, he, of, I thought about it today as I was driving in. He Listen up, Austin. was on my – he was on the board as one of my my guys. Remember, he was like one of the guys I was sure. closest. No, he was. No, and not, and he, he was one of the guys I was closest to. And the reason I didn't pick him was he was on our show, and he made it seem pretty clear that he's it, that he was probably not the goal line guy. Yeah, that was what I took away from it. And he's totally the goal line yes, guy. Yes, one hundred percent. Oh man. Well, and he, he's, he's just, so good. He just gets he scores from from anywhere yeah. too in the passing game. So. Keenan, solid. Mike Williams, is this was last week's performance uh, a wake up, or was it just a temporary stirring? It does not give me the it, the confidence needed to have him be a smash start. Uh, it's great to see that he's not 
uh, injured. He's capable of of doing uh, you know a, a big splash play that is going to make him a top ten wide receiver on the week. That's all great. I'm fine to start him, but my expectation is not that he's going to be the uh, 10, 12, 16 target guy that we saw earlier in the season. That He's gone back to the role of being the 5, 6 target wide receiver, and I think we need to act accordingly with ranking him that he is the number two. All right, moving on. The Rams at 7-3 and three take on the Green Bay Packers, who are 8-3. and three. Should be a fun game in Green Bay and Lambeau. Packers minus one, the DK Sportsbook line. The over-under is 48 points. So I'll take that. Green Bay has covered nine of 11 games, highest in the NFL. And so Los Angeles, they've got to figure some stuff out. They lost two straight games. They went on the bye. They lost Robert Woods. They got Odell Beckham. The Packers defense has been absolutely dominant at home, and they've allowed 17 points, 17 points, 10, and zero in the last four games. In fact, you know, I, I'd be a little bit worried about some of these Rams offensive players. There is a thing that makes you say, okay, I just trust Sean McVay to figure it out, but they've struggled for a couple games, and figuring it out is not as simple as, you know, just throwing guys out there. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it take you know, never happened for Baker and Odell. And we spent two years saying, Yeah, they're gonna get on the same page. Eventually that page was, you know, your walking papers. So Cooper Cup is always in your lineup, but beyond that, do we have confidence on the Rams side of the offense? Uh, I'm still starting Daryl Henderson for sure. He's um, you know, he hasn't always been great. He was sputtering before the bye week. Uh, but he has six touchdowns inside the five. He's tied for the third most. Um, if the offense can get it going, and I, I said earlier, I believe Matthew Stafford has a bounce back game in this one. I'm absolutely putting Henderson in my lineup. Agreed. Um, what about Beckham and Jefferson and the other wide receivers, Mike? <sighs> Man, I'm still rolling with Van Jefferson. Over Beckham? Yes, See, I will play Beckham this week over Van Jefferson. Where do you weigh in, Jay? I would not play Beckham. I couldn't play Beckham because I would never have him on my roster. No, it's over Van Jefferson. Talk to the people. Um, but to the people, honestly, I would I would prefer Van Jefferson. Some of the comments being made about him still trying to get integrated in. He's had a couple of weeks. I feel like he should be. Um, well, he's had in, yeah, kind of a week. You're talking about Van Jefferson. I'm talking about Beckham. Like He had the game where – it was essentially trade into the game, and then mm -hmm. he's had the bye week to get assimilated. But I like. I think I, they're I just, both. I, I, I think Van Jefferson knows the scheme more, and so that's the only reason I go with Van. It's not like I'm I'm pounding the table over here saying that Jefferson is must be played. No, over I I know that, and and the thing for me is it's a trend. Like Van Jefferson has played bad football for a while. His catch percentage is under fifty percent over the last four weeks. It's only fifty seven percent on the year. Like. He is not, he's getting targeted seven times a week, eight times a week. But other than that big play happening, there's a reason the team went out and replaced him, right? We, we don't think about it that sure. way. Like they went out and literally replaced Van Jefferson with Odell Beckham Jr. and spent the time and money to do it. Yeah, that's a fair point. Now Jefferson's necessary, but yeah. I, that's why I'm going to put my hopes into Beckham over Jefferson? No, that that's fair. And, and what I wanted to follow up and say is, while I am a Van Jefferson over Beckham, I'm not either you know what I mean like I think both of these players you're just pat you're a pass I I think both these players have a decent mediocre line at the end of the game both guys are going to be four for 50 and and they're going to have helped the offense give stats to Stafford but I just don't I don't love to Statsford to Statsford um uh, yeah I don't I don't love either player Aaron Rodgers Aaron, I'll play him AJ Dillon yep we don't expect Aaron Jones back out there. No, it, it, the MCL sprain was given a one to two week timeline. This would be week two. I would, and the way that the Packers handle injuries, Jones will be out. You think so? I, yeah, I do. Okay, one to two does it. <laughs> <laughs> one to two does imply one is a possibility. So yeah, I'm just but, surfacing that. If if Jones it, is active, you play him. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, yeah. MVS or the Beckham Jefferson choice. MVS. Uh, wow. I would go with the, the but, but the, might be right. I'd go with the Rams side unless Alan Lazard misses another game. Tyler Higby 
What do we do with Tyler Higby? He has not finished above tight end nine on the week. Are we just finding a better option with higher upside? Yes, we are. Man, he should have caught that touchdown pass last week. That would have helped. Yeah, send in the doctor. Okay. Wait, no, Higby hit Higby had a touchdown in week ten. Last week? Yeah. Oh, okay. Should have caught all the other passes. Then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was uh, he was the tight end nine last yeah. time we saw him. He doesn't generally like I'd play him over Conklin any yes, any day. Yes, I, I, I would as well. He's not a terrible start. He's, he's in the Schultz tier, and if he, you prefer Schultz, then do do that. Yes, he's on the field. You know, last game ninety eight percent of snaps. That's what you want, and obviously the last couple games, uh, the the Rams have struggled offensively. If they get it going, it's it's better for him. It's funny he hasn't been above the tight end nine nine on the year, and that's kind of a stat. We but he has been a top ten tight end four times. It's ten yeah. or nine. It's yeah. It's it just comes down to it's been so disappointing of what he could have become. Yes, the big beast. Yeah. Which I mean, to be honest, that potential still exists right yes, now yes it, Be yes it does because of losing robert woods and because of the, the tumult at wide receiver if beckham doesn't mm -hmm. end up integrating which he's yet to do known most to do team, that yeah I mean, he's a free agent by the way beckham for the dynasty segment yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's 29 and a half or whatever the if you looked at the the rams the last time we saw them so it was the first time we saw them without robert woods but they got just shellacked by san francisco and i think it was the absence of robert woods of it hurt. You didn't have the reliable guy who could just, who who hits a dig route or hits a an in route for five and gets that first down. So and he threw we, it to Higby and Higby so just dropped him. Maybe Higby becomes that by the end of the season. The Vikings at five and five take on the San Francisco 49ers, who are also five and five. The DK Sportsbook line here, 49ers minus three and a half. The over under is forty eight and a half. This is such a huge game for both teams. Being at five hundred, fighting for the six seven seed in these conferences. I, I had a hard time deciding who to take in this line. I really did. I think the, I took the 49ers to cover uh, in the end, but I think both of these teams can win this game. Both need it, and the 49ers, I just – I like what I saw from them the last time they were out there on the field. Let me see if I can sway you. Do it. I'm going to start Kirk Cousins in the Dynasty League. Now <laughs> you're – you know what? Now I believe in the 49ers even more. Yeah, that wouldn't sway him. No. He picked the Niners. Um, <laughs> well, he just he was like unsure. Oh, he thinks it's San take Francisco. me off the fence? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a golden. <laughs> I mean, Foot Clan, Mike played me in the Dynasty League last week and uh, benched Kirk Cousins, and that was all it took. Yep. To, and if you played him, what would have happened? I would have won. How many times is Kirk Cousins on your bench the actual reason you've lost this year? This oh, is probably the same amount like as – Four to five? The same amount as – when I played Kirk Cousins, he was the reason oh. I lost. <laughs> oh, no. He really is really unbelievable. Wait, does that mean he's responsible for every one of your games? Yes, he is the bane of my existence he's currently. He's kryptonite for sure. <sighs> he is the kind of quarterback where you say stream him, but it's been hard to identify which games. He doesn't care about matchups when it comes to streaming. He yeah. just He's just either great or he's terrible. Well, both of these teams, the Vikings and the 49ers, are conundrums because they can beat anyone. You, you put either one of these teams against uh, the best. You, you put them in the Super Bowl, they can win. And they can lose to anyone. They just, they're just they wacky. Um, so this will be a, a crazy fight, hopefully. Uh, now, have the 49ers won a game at home yet? I don't I don't believe so. Really? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Both these teams started 1-3 and three and 2-4. and four. Uh, The Minnesota offense, 31, 27, and 34. That's the point totals the last three weeks. It's going to be hard for San Francisco to slow them down because they've been force-feeding Justin Jefferson, and it's been working. So Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson, and I, I'll throw Adam Thielen in there. Those three players feel like locks in your fantasy lineup. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. They are they are pretty much locks. Also, update, the 49ers, uh, the Rams' victory was at, at home. home. Yeah. On the other side, Jimmy Garoppolo is my start of the week. I think he's, this is going to be a fun one. I think he's interesting. And then Elijah Mitchell. Do we have anything new other than the day-to-day -day report on Elijah Mitchell? Um, the I'm gonna whole, do. I'm gonna do some digging. You yeah, talk. Yeah, nothing talk. new other than he was, you know, possible to play last week, and now he's day to day. So I, I think my expectation has been that he will be active, but you're going to play whoever it is. I'm still playing Jeff Wilson, despite disappointing. If Elijah Mitchell is out, agree. We got the work. We we tweeted out the the play of him wide open for a I mean 
I could have thrown a touchdown pass in that play, and uh, Jimmy G just unfortunately missed him. Let me put that to the test for you. Would you play Jeff Wilson if he's the Assuming starter? Elijah's out. Assuming, yeah. Which, as of 17 hours ago, San Francisco Chronicle just calls him iffy for the game. Oh, he's playing. Oh, because <laughs> iffy means playing? I don't know what iffy means. That, that's where they need to go with, with all reports. Yeah. But Jeff Wilson in this matchup against uh, Minnesota or Ramondre Stevenson? Jeff Wilson, Jeff if he's, Wilson or oh. Damian Harris. Jeff Wilson, really? Yeah, if he's if he's alone in this matchup, I will continue to. Uh, uh, I'll continue You'll give him a shot. Yep. Okay. Uh, you agree with that, Mike? I do. Debo Samuel. Don't need to talk about him. Yep. Jeez, Sometimes you have to push a button, though. We are giving away a Debo Samuel jersey. Oh, we should give that hashtag. Onto, out. Oh, we're, we're towards the end of the show. Yeah, this is the moment because this is a hard to find. No one's skipping to this part. Uh, my vote is hashtag dinner butter. Oh, I, I I'm with you. Okay, because okay. okay. that's not going to be a hashtag that other people tweet often. No, so we'll find you and we'll enter well, you. Let's, let's, let's make sure. I, maybe dinner butter is a thing. But no, you just tag us and yeah. put the put the hashtag in there and. And let us know that you uh, that you made I'm, it through. I'm looking, and apparently there, in the history of Twitter, there is one. <laughs> one mention of dinner one, butter? One back in June. That's of, how original you are, Back Jason. in June of 2014. Mm. Was it me? <laughs> no, if it was Jason. <laughs> no. Had a heck of oh, a meal. Love me some dinner butter. All right, let's do it. Dinner butter's the if you tag us and you put dinner butter hashtag in there, we'll enter you to win the Debo Samuel sign jersey. And uh, let us know that you made it through the Megalobowl or the Megalodon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brandon Ayuk, last three weeks, it's been good, bad, good. That's that's the world of a, a wide receiver or a third pass catching option, and which is okay. He is in for me, at, especially like as a flex type of a player. Minnesota struggles against fantasy wide receivers. Flex Ayuk or Jeff Wilson? Ooh, uh, Jeff in alone. Jeff Wilson. Okay, over Ayuk. Agree. Yes. George Kittle, touchdowns in three straight. You play him, he's your tight end. Sunday night football, the Cleveland Browns at six and five take on the Baltimore Ravens, seven and three. Oh, they shouldn't be seven and three, my goodness. They, they keep finding a way. They, they found a way last week with Huntley coming back at the end of the game against Matt Nagy, and then they found a way with the 66 yarder. But hey, credit due. Good teams find a way, right? DraftKings Sportsbook line Ravens minus three and a half at home. The over under is 45 and a half points. Uh, I don't know what to make of Cleveland in general. They feel like the uh, the Monty Python, it's just a flesh wound uh, skit. The Black Knight? Yeah, where it's pretending that it's all right and just every week they're just trying to survive and they're surviving. I mean, they're they're in the playoff picture despite being last in their division right now. So Lamar did practice. He's starting to feel better. He goes yes. right back into your lineup. Absolutely. Devontae Freeman running back for the Ravens Yep, I in your point. lineup. No update on Hollywood Brown. I misreported earlier in the week that it was an uh, illness for Hollywood Brown. Uh, it was Bateman that had missed the practice due to illness. The report from the Ravens was that Brown was a thigh injury, not an illness. So that is something we do have to continually monitor this week. And if Lamar plays and Hollywood misses, you could finally get that Rashad Bateman oh. breakout. I think Bateman would if 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 Bateman is alone at wide receiver and no Hollywood, he becomes to me like a must play. I would I would play him over you know, we've we've talked about so many of these questions the Jerry Judy's and um Kadarius Tony and all these guys that are like, Yeah, you can play him, I'm not sure. I would definitely play Bateman over all of them if Hollywood is out and Bateman and Lamar Jackson are in. Mark Andrews, of course, he's on pace for 95 receptions, and he's, his he's usage crushing. is going up. He's crushing. Uh, Nick Chubb is a machine. Yeah. Uh, per Scott Barrett, leads the NFL in yards after contact for the last two years. You know the story. But um, Kareem Hunt, the quote from him, see how I feel during the week, but I'm definitely thinking I'm going to play. That's great. Yeah, and then I would put him back in as a low-end running back too. I would not touch wide receivers no. because they're too hard. I mean, they don't even get enough – Targets in this offense sometimes. So Austin Hooper is a – like Hooper or Higby with the limitations Higby. that Cleveland yeah, has. Yeah. Hooper or Ingram? 
Ingram. Yeah, I'd play Ingram. Uh, the, the, the question here for Hooper is, I need more information, and it's Wednesday, but we need to know, is, is Peoples-Jones okay to play? Is Anthony Schwartz okay to play? Uh, if those guys are out, then Hooper becomes much more interesting. He's, he saw good volume, right? Yeah, seven targets last week. Didn't turn into a lot. And the the problem, a, a problem for this team is unfortunately Baker Mayfield. And it's he is a, he's hurting. He is in pain. Like you if you're watching any of these games, you're going this guy should be sitting. I know we all we, we you commend a player, oh, he's so tough. He's playing through all of his injuries. Baker looks like he is at the point where the the head <laughs> Scott coach standing. Yeah, yes. Like the coach should make Th the throw in the that, towel. Like, like Case Keenum is going – even the play of Case Keenum gives us a better chance to win because Baker is just so beat up. Yeah. You it's, expect him to get up and be facing the wrong direction, take the yes. snap backwards, not know where he is. He's it hurting. Is, it is a brutal year for him, and every week he takes a massive shot uh, like that he barely gets up from, but then he goes and he keeps playing. Uh, yeah, I I mean, we, we all see that. I will say as a DFS dart throw, Donovan Peoples-Jones and Anthony Schwartz uh, the only reason I bring them up as that is because the Ravens just every single week give up a bomb touchdown. It it's there. It's just yeah. it's so automatic right now. Um, you know, Mooney had one last week that those two guys are speedsters who can get deep, and we've seen them do it a couple times. I feel like it might be more likely for Schwartz to get back out on the field coming off the concussion versus the groin injury for Donovan Peoples Jones. Ah! Seattle at three and seven. Monday night football game taking on the Washington football team who are four and six. The DK Sportsbook line is Washington minus one at home. The over under is 47 points and Washington's on a roll right now. They, if they win this game, they will be, you know, they will be on the outside, but they will be in the mix for that last spot. And they have a bunch of divisional games coming up. 29 points, 27 points and a couple of wins in a row over good opponents. They had a gutty win last week. That was not Carolina imploding. Carolina got off to a strong start, and I think they played well. And then Washington just outplayed them down the stretch. Defense has improved, They're especially against running backs, which, you know, if that if you needed a reason not to play Seattle running backs above the reason that you already have, the Washington defense, number nine in the league over the last six weeks, reinforcements have arrived by way of Curtis Samuel and Logan Thomas maybe getting back as well which could reinforce the streaming ability of Taylor Heineke, who, um, you know, I think is a great option this week. Heineke's six he, top 12 performances. So when he hits, he hits. He is the quarterback 15 on the season, you know, in total points. But that's – I don't think that accurately paints the picture, uh, the picture of how like, – Heineke has been very useful for, for fantasy football. Not that you've always been able to call it because, like – you weren't playing him against Tampa Bay, uh, but number twelve against Tampa, number seven against Carolina last week. He's he's been better than a lot of uh, other quarterbacks that people are counting on. Russ is Mike's start of the week on the other side of the ball at quarterback, and then DK Metcalf's my start of the week at wide receiver. Tyler Lockett is always a a risk, but always has a big play. And against Washington, it seems like he'd be all right. Yes. And so you end up in a situation here where do you like the over in this one at 47 points? Uh, if Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf can do what you guys think that they are going to do, then absolutely the over will hit. I am still skeptical of Russell Wilson. It seems to me that, uh, you know, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, the fact that a four and six sub 500 team, I, I know they're at home, but they are favored over Seattle with Russell Wilson. I mean, you love to see it, but um, yeah, I'm I'm worried that Seattle's offense just continues not clicking. Okay, I think that's all the matchups. Oh, Brooks, do you have it. any? You're, hi you're not hiding from us. Any matchups? I haven't. At this point, I don't even know. We did it. Are you looking around, Jay? I just wondered if there was one under the table, but there wasn't. <sighs> if there were more matchups, then I wouldn't have to spin this wheel. But uh, nevertheless. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. 
my lineup took a bath last week. I mean, you had Deke, uh, you had Dak Prescott doing nothing because C.D. Lamb got concussed. Who was also of, in your lineup? Yeah, and then Rashad Bateman. We Jason and I left mm -hmm. him in even after the Lamar news. Um, it was a disaster. I lost uh, badly. That is one of the toughest things about when when we do this segment. We're picking them. It, what I feel like is early on Friday, it's and very, now yeah. now we're doing it super early <laughs> on a Wednesday. But as a tip, if you're playing. Make sure, you know, Saturday night, Sunday morning when the, the latest news, check check the lineups that you've made and find, you know, run a run a fine tooth comb over them. Yeah, no no question. We have had pivots when, when players have missed or news has happened. We've we've pivoted. So, all right, I'll spin it. Wheel of shame. OK, well, let's spin the wheel. I already feel shame, but let's just amplify it. Uh, what do we got here? Jester Mullet. hat, bicycle helmet. Oh, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the the winner here. Uh, I am going to be Merlin. <laughs> Merlin the wizard. Oh yes, um, <laughs> Merlin. Oh, that's I can never great. think uh, when I hear Merlin. I think of the old cartoon. Yep, and I and think the of the Sam Neill uh, TV special. Do you oh, remember? Dude, I, I loved the. I do. I'm not familiar with the television. Sam Neill special. TV special was uh, big. Okay, I got to. I the liked game. the Merlin uh, <laughs> television show. It's, it's already good. That had five seasons. I actually watched. And that. he's just got uh, back <laughs> the, in the beard day. is going on. So huge and beard. Now, oh my gosh, that thing is. And now the wig. Gandalf is going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there. It, now you look like the age you've always <laughs> wanted to be, an old man. This is fantastic. Oh. Also itchy. <laughs> oh, is it? A little bit ski. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun for me over the last uh, long you are, while. You are like the king of second. This oh, is so I'm, much I, hair. I'll take second place every week. <laughs> I even talk to Kyle when, when we're making these. I'm like, I'm not, like, I don't need to win. I just need to not finish in last. That's my goal. Oh, when you're talking to Kyle when you make these, huh? Yeah, well, he's my sounding board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. See a sounding board for You're uh, a fraud. anything else? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Looking good, Merlin. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> Why don't you guys tell me your lineups for this week? All right, Kyle, I will... you go first. <laughs> That's rude. Um, I'm going to start with Cam Newton. I'm taking the quarterback that you uh, dirty dog. Mike had last week. He he only went What's from 5100 to 5600 this week. Um, after an awesome uh week, and he's playing against Miami. So I love the value there. Opening Cam things Newton. up. You've got him as well. I've got him too. All right, who's your quarterback, Merlin? I do not have Cam Newton. <laughs> I have What magical quarterback do you have? Jalen Hurts. Oh. Uh, Jalen Hurts against the Giants. You that had to be a pay up, right? 7300. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes. I love I seeing you up. come around on Jalen Hurts. Uh at running back, I have one expensive and one very cheap. I'm going Christian McCaffrey because he's Christian McCaffrey's 9000 but I want the points stacked with Cam Newton. And uh, to make that work, Ty Johnson, the New York Jets running oh. back against Houston. For how much? 4,300. Okay. I, I'm going to go. I'll go quick because I have Christian McCaffrey as well. Okay. Um, and then I went $100 less than Ty Johnson for an equally disgusting Whoa. Rex Burkhead. Oh, oh, yeah, baby. Disgusting. All right. I have the combo of James Robinson at home against the Atlanta Falcons for 6,200. And then Miles Sanders uh, coming off of the injury. The, the price did not increase. It Who's your first one? I'm sorry. James I was Rob busy putting this. <laughs> their wig is very tight, and my ears are very flat on my face now. So, anyways. James Robinson. James Robinson. And what was the second one? Miles Sanders at just 5,100. I really like seeing your mustache pop out above <laughs> Merlin's mustache. Oh, that's better. Um, all right. So, at uh, wide receiver, I have uh, the uh, – the, uh, D named brothers. Uh, I've got Devonta Smith. Okay. Deontay Johnson and Debo Samuel. Oh my. Uh, they are 6,400, 6,600. And I paid up for Debo at 7,900 okay. against Minnesota. Well, I have Debo as well. Okay. And, uh, I also have Devonte Smith as well. To complete your stack with, uh, with the stack with Hertz. Yeah, and then sense. I also have Odell Beckham jr. I'm taking a shot at 5,000 in this game that he gets 
an opportunity being worked into the offense. I have the Deontay Johnson uh, overlap at just 6,600. I completed my stack. I didn't go with McCaffrey. I went with DJ Moore at 6,200 uh, against that Miami Dolphins secondary. And then I paid down. I went Brandon Ayuk at 5,300. So I have the other side of the ball. We'll that will be that really bounces. interesting, having different wide receivers in give the your, same game. Give me your tight end, your flex, and your defense. Uh, my tight end is Jared Kuk. Uh, he's feel all, good about that. No, huh? I don't feel good about that at all. But he's only good? he's only three thousand. So I'm just praying for a touchdown. I've got uh, I paid way up over your um, Rex Burkhead forty five hundred for David Johnson. In Give me flex? the pass catcher in a full PPR. Okay. Um, and I went with the Texans uh, against the Jets only twenty three hundred. I'm so thankful you did that because I did the Texans as well. They were the cheapest defense against the Jets, and I was hoping somebody else would do it so that it yeah. just washes out. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski is my tight end. I'm taking him Ooh. at 4,400 against the Colts. Liked what I saw. And then uh, the cheapest player on my roster, I had to bargain shop to get here. One moment, please. <laughs> Let me fix the mustache. Uh, it was Chester Rogers at 3,500. Okay. I like that call. Uh, I also have Gronk as my tight end. And you guys are wrong. There was actually a cheaper defense. Mm, I, I will be rolling with the Jacksonville Jaguars, 2,200 at home against those Atlanta Falcons. Oh, and my flex player is Dalvin Cook at 8,100. Mm. Which you tried to do last you week. Did, you did that back-to-back -back weeks. Yes. You saved, you saved some ammunition. I did. Okay. Now, see, I, Brooks is suggesting maybe we, we hit a little bit of mailbag here, but I am also wearing a beard <laughs> that is uncomfortable. Um, so someone hit the button before we do that. <laughs> oh, okay. before we do that, I do want to, uh, thank DraftKings for supporting the, uh, the fantasy face off. You can grab the app right now. Use the code ballers this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code ballers only at DraftKings, the official fantasy draft partner of the NFL minimum $5 deposit required eligibility restrictions apply the best. See DraftKings.com for details. The best part of these is when Andy has to do like a professional. Yeah. You laugh at me every read. time. And he looks, looks you look like, like an idiot. It's like Merlin. All right. You guys want to do some questions? Yeah, let's yeah. go. I'm going to need to be like clean shaven Merlin for the, for That's the mailbag. Fine. All right. Do I have the drop? Yes, I do. Mailbag. Bang, oh, bang, oh, yeah. I have the drop, but I don't have one of my monitors in because it was tangled in the beard. Uh, let's go here. Uh, do we have any voicemails, Brooks, here, or just questions? Uh, no voicemails. No voicemails. Okay. Um, I also don't have any questions. I got it here. Uh, Cameron in Indiana wants to know, Bills or Bears defense in Week 12? The Bears have the ultimate matchup, but the Bills are the Bills. Yeah, the, the Bills defense right now, they are um, one spot behind the Bears to me personally. I The, the New Orleans Saints, Trevor Simeon's, getting it done enough and no. I, look, no they're not well no i'm not well i mean he has been putting up points it's just coming garbage time and and maybe that's what happens i don't think you're gonna go wrong either way here um maybe it's a jared goff decision maybe if jared goff is not the starter for detroit you roll the bears um I'm fine uh, with that otherwise go bills i'm fine with that all right next question is from jan oh janice from germany oh, bonjour should i start russ wilson or cam newton in week 12. I am personally going Cameron Newton. Yeah, I'll play Cam. Oh, man. Because I don't want the floor of the recent Russ. Yeah. yeah. It's I, not that Russ can't outperform him. I don't mind I, that. I'm afraid of the floor. I do not mind that at all. Kyle in Vermont, should I trade away Miles Gaskin for Miles yes. Sanders? Yes. Yeah, I would. And yes. yes, I would absolutely do that. And the final question of the Megalodon. Megalodon. Caleb in Kansas City. It's a PPR league. Should I start Cedric Wilson? Over Tyler Boyd, I think so. The Pittsburgh, probably. I think so. Either way, even if Ceedee Lamb plays, yeah, I think you. I, I agree. Yeah, I think the assumption right now is that he's going to play, but that's certainly not a guarantee. Um, so that's going to do it for the Megala Megalodon episode. <laughs> oh, of the we did it! Thank you to uh, our fine producers, and yes. uh, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, thank you to all of our listeners who have supported the show over the years, who have subscribed and reviewed and. Support us at jointhefoot.com. Very thankful. We were reflecting in this recent week. Like I get to dress up like Merlin and talk about fantasy football, and that is only because of the Foot Clan. So 
Thank you very much. We appreciate each and every one of you. We hope your season has been fun and successful, but if not successful, at least a lot of fun. So uh, without further ado, we will close this thing out. We'll be on Spotify Green Room later this afternoon, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Good luck. Happy Thanksgiving. Farewell. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.